Hello everyone and welcome back to the Art Cafe. This is episode 110 with your host Maciej Kuchara and in this episode I sat down with Manu Carrasco. Manu is a founder of Expedition Art, an organization that raises awareness for wildlife and nature conservation through art initiatives. Manu is also a designer at Cool, an outdoor clothing company. I gotta say Manu is not only just a good friend but also honestly one of the most interesting artists I've met in my life. Hope you're going to enjoy this one, and let's go! Permanent. crazy times it's crazy man it's, yeah what a what a what a strange time but i mean i thought you know i was talking who was i talking to? aaron blaze i was talking to aaron yeah. my brother bear uh and i was my saying brother bear. yeah and i said to him uh this is normal anyway i mean we sit here and draw anyway right you know <clears throat> yeah you know what's so strange though? I'm, I'm having a hard time like i'm a pretty active guy and i work out and i do stuff but the, the since this corona stuff started it's been hard for me to get motivated I just want to draw and draw and draw, which not bad, right? But right. move around. So yesterday I got out and shot my bow outside the, the yard there for a while at the target just to just to do something else, just to focus on something else, right? Yeah. yeah. For you, <laughs> when you sound like, oh, it's hard for me to get motivated, and you're talking about going out, which is quite opposite to like what, <laughs> what an average person would want to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it's just, oh, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. What a, what a surreal time. It's super surreal to me. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You know, it's, um... I think I want to wake up out of a dream, right? It's, uh, yeah, it's. I mean, I guess it depends where where you live, right? Uh, yeah. Here in LA, it's like it seems like it's there's two camps. Uh -huh. There is a camp of people who don't care. It's just like I just gonna go out and do whatever and do it as I used to do, you know, and and just want to shake your hands. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, stop. And then there's another camp which is just absolute psychos of like I gonna barricade myself buy all the toilet toilet paper <laughs> oh, I, know. That, I don't know i don't get that you know uh i was in uh i was talking to my brother and we're like we, i don't understand the whole toilet paper thing <laughs> like what 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 is it to like why you know so that's, that makes no sense whatsoever it makes no sense you know it's like uh i don't i don't i don't get it you know i don't get it you know i, I hey. just think i just think of the first people that started that you know grab a whole bunch of toilet paper everybody sort of spins off from that and it's the yeah, they just saw like, oh my god, he's buying toilet paper. He he knows something I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, yeah, it, and it happens, man. It sucks, you know. Sucks. You know all the memes that came out of it, though. <laughs> oh, I know, right? It, it's been a lot of good stuff. I mean, I, I, I yeah. you know, I have, I've, uh, at the end of the night, I'll look briefly at headlines of some of the news, you know, um, and not pay too much attention. Because yep. Facebook right now is crazy with people um, going berserk, right? They're either extremists of like panic or, you know, or, or political or slamming. And I'm not a very political person. I try to keep things to uh, a neutral, you know, place where it won't yeah. affect me. And, and, and those things don't motivate me. Those things just put me in a bad mood, you know, or, oh, yeah. or depress me or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I... I if you look at my Facebook or my Instagram, it's really never about anything but stuff that I'm working on or, or you know, projects that I'm involved with or, you know, how I keep myself busy. So, yeah. You know, <laughs> thankfully, my work, uh, being an, an outdoor clothing company, it helps. Uh, yeah. It's awesome, you know, and it's neat to – also, it's neat for me to go around the world and see how many people wear our stuff. It's, it's, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah let's 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 get to that let's actually get to that chronologically i want to you know anyone who knows you they know who you are and where you came from and it's it's, it's uh it's kind of crazy like where you started and where you are now like it's so different oh. <laughs> actually I, it, it, like 
I don't follow that many people on Instagram or or Facebook, but I follow you because you have the craziest. It's like, what? You're friends <laughs> with that guy? You're like, what the hell is going on? I know, man. <laughs> I, you know, it's 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 just like the art world, though. You know, you uh, uh, you you fall with like-minded people, right? I guess. Yeah. You know, and then you. Even with the like-minded people, you separate who are going to be your friends and who are going to be just, uh, you know, colleagues or or whatever. Yeah. You know. So. Uh, uh, you're uh, one of the most interesting interesting friends I have for sure. Oh, really? <laughs> like you're so like you're just just so different than anyone else. Well. In terms of in terms of like what you do on a daily basis, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make life uh, fun, man. I, you know, yeah. right now I'm at a position. Uh, well. All the work that I did in video games and movies and, and animation, everything, I it's 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 I love it all. It's all been an experience, right? But it gets to a point sometimes where you're like, I don't know. I felt like I needed to do something something else, right? And then, uh, as you know, with our with our concept studio that David and Terry and I owned, or you know, co-owned with Christy and everybody, uh, yeah. when that fell apart, I just had to move on. And then we created Expedition Art, right? And Expedition Art. Uh, puts me outside uh, trying to use art to educate people about wildlife and about nature and yeah. one thing led to another but uh, because of a because of a downfall it started something great and it's been an uphill ride the entire time up to this yeah right now though I feel like I've been rejected by Dikembe Mutombo with this coronavirus thing you know <laughs> I was about to slam dunk and I just got rejected but um, it, it's been surreal but it's been it's been a heck of a ride, and, and the people that I've met, uh, from my heroes to colleagues that I've admired, fans, you know, even though we're artists, we have people that we're fans of, right? And it's been it's been great to be friends with Kim Jong, with yourself, with Ian McKeg, Aaron, uh, Aaron, and I yeah. really hit it off. Um, so. It, it's been great, and then I just had to do a, I, I, a switch came in my life during freelance. Um, I was going to tell you a story that that's it's kind of funny. I'm a falconer, you know that too, right? I, yeah. I fly birds of prey. When I've learned, I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you wear stuff when you're out flying your bird. You know, different people have different styles of, of flying with different types of birds, mm -hmm. falcons, eagles, hawks. And in the area that I used to run around, there was a lot of briar. And so you start developing the love for your equipment, just like we do with our brushes and pens or whatever. Right. So I was wearing these cool pants uh, for a long time, and they held up and held up. What I admired about them is uh, the industrial design aspect of those pants, right? It wasn't just your typical pants, you know. You pull them off the rack, and then you look at them, and when you hold them out, they're sort of shaped. There's and anatomy in there there's uh right. there's not it's not just these cardboard flat cutouts you know so that attracted that attracted my eye to things and uh you know i wore them for years and years and one time i finally, I finally wore my pants out i had my mom with me and i said uh we stopped at a, at a store i said hey i need to grab a couple of pair of pants and then i picked up a couple of shirts too uh i knew nobody at cool yet and uh she asked me, she said, I noticed that you buy this brand. I'll think, what is it about this little brand? Because we have that little crest, the little mountain crest on our shirts. Right. And, all. and uh, um, I said, well, it's it's the whole way of, of thinking of, of how this is built, right? It's like concept art. It literally is like concept art. They even had the drawings on the side, how they put all these engineering into the pants or the shirts, you know, with, right. they articulate the sleeves. So... Um, and I actually told her, I said, you know, mom, if I ever got out of concept art or video games and all this stuff, I said, there's, there's, I would love to go work for this company. And, uh, but I don't know how to even start. Like, what do I do? Do I submit my portfolio, with all my artwork, <laughs> of all the stuff, on, you know, you know, I had no, no clue. So hey guys, I, I drew pants for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, how do you even do that? Right. I mean, I, so the weird thing about it is like, Four or five years later, after that, I get a call from, uh, from from Kevin, my boss, or he hates it that he hates that, but he's he's a called me and he said, um, "I'd love for you to do some work for us." And I was like, "Wait, what?" You know, <laughs> and, uh, um, 
I said, uh, I'd, you know, I'd love to, I'm a big fan. So we, I, I started doing a lot of advertising stuff, <clears throat> promo illustrations, vintage look stuff. It was completely different of all the stuff that I was doing. So I was really enjoying it. And I still do enjoy it. And, um, uh, later on, I said, I, I just got, I worked with a freelance for a while and then they offered me the job to come on board as a full-time artist. And my mother said, wait a moment, didn't you tell me years ago that this is who you wanted to work for? I said, yeah, isn't that <laughs> it's like out of the blue. So I just find that really strange, man. You know, it's so, so, I don't know. You know, I feel like, I feel like you might have been projecting it, you know, without even knowing like yeah i guess so just by the way you do art and all that stuff yeah you know? probably, yeah i guess so you know uh but it's it's great and i came on board and do a lot of illustration i get to work on a lot of media stuff so I, i'm all over the place right this yeah. storytelling uh and and it's a collaboration like i said the passion with those people there it's great and then you get to visit other artists that you know nothing about like the pattern makers yeah uh, you know, breaking down something, you know, and and we have a um, a team there that actually makes the samples. So they'll cut the patterns, make them, put them on people, and it's just it's just incredible. It's just another aspect of concepting, right? But this yeah, it's way of, different. Yeah, instead of just concepting Captain America's fight, <laughs> fighting outfit as opposed to the the outfit that he's gonna wear in these shots, this is real life stuff, right? And then going yeah iterations going through the iterations and, and and then you do apply a lot of the stuff that you've learned on you know from yeah. the stuff that we've done or that you even still do but uh, it still applies back to to real life so it's been i think the the closest i got to this world was working with costume designers on ghost in the shell mm -hmm. where we would just like look through the patterns and yes they would tell you know we're going to use this material you know like we have to pay attention to joints and you know how the elbow is you know bending like this is probably where we want to add those like extra lines that gives us indication that there's maybe a different material here mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that so it's like a very crude version of of you what you might be doing right now but you know same, but um it's the same thing i mean it's yeah really it's really cool um yeah but it's and, very rare it's very unless you work with the costume designers all the time it's very rare you get like to interface or if you work with the clothing company you know and it's, um, it's been a whole different uh, experience for me, and and you learn from everything, right? And because uh, because I'm in this industry, it's it's you know, I now I, I I focus a lot of like all my outdoor and wilderness stuff that I love anyway, right? Right. Yeah. It's all yeah. animal stuff. So it's all kind of congealed together, and it's been a it's been a great ride. I mean, so where did it all started for you because like you 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 were not in the business you were in no at not at all you were like where we where, where we are <laughs> <laughs> yeah um <sighs> well it all started with that call i think but before that um you know well, i mean how do you get to to the business we are first how, like, I, I, okay well yeah um, well that was a, that's a lot <sighs> um 50 years ago when I was a yeah, young. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so my, moving out of, moving out of, uh, Texas. So I want to go back to high school. So out of high yep. school, I was lucky enough to, uh, I went from Odessa, Texas, West Texas to Los Angeles, lived in Sherman yep. Oaks. And I was an assistant to, uh, an amazing, uh, artist there that worked on the Flintstones on the free pebble spots. Mm -hmm. I was an assistant for him for a while. Uh, I moved in L to L.A., total culture shock. I was too young, probably 19, you know, going from, like, West Texas, Friday Night Lights, literally, you know, Permian Panthers, literally, to L.A. That was quite a, an experience. So I went from that to moving back to Texas to working at an ad agency, um, you know, running errands, everything, anything you need to do, right, to do, and then you move your way up, and then uh, we we had a commercial that needed to be animated, so the animation studio found out that I had a little bit of experience, mm -hmm. had an artist there, so I ended up do, making the move to Austin, um, worked on an animation studio called Heart of Texas Productions. There, we worked on some kid videos, straight to video stuff. Uh, the more I learned about animation, the more I got involved with DreamWorks, Fox, and ended up working on 
Space Jam, Anastasia, Prince of Egypt, a lot right. of animated movies. And then um, I went from that to animating on video games to Acclaim Studios, which is where I met David. Uh, I think I was there a couple of years before David came aboard, though. Uh, I worked on Turok. That was in Austin, too, right? In Austin. That's where you guys met? Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I was talking to David about it. I, I still remember the day that David came in with his portfolio, and we're all looking at his work, you know? And he's all excited, smiling. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so you can just picture, right? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, But anyway, um, I worked at Acclaim. I don't know how long we were there. To be honest, I'm bad with numbers. I want to. I'm going to guesstimate probably eight years, nine years. I don't know. Damn. You know. That's and, a long time. Which for now it's unheard of, right? Like with companies, I guess. I, yeah. I think I may be overshooting. It, watch it be like six or seven, but still, it was still quite a bit. Worked on a lot of titles, and then um, I ended up actually before David came aboard, I was animating, and. I didn't know how to animate on 3D. We were doing it on Power Animator at the time. That's what I was learning. Alias, I believe. <clears throat> but uh, so what I would do, Meshe, is, uh, okay, you got to animate all these bad guys getting blasted or whatever, or Turok <laughs> running, right? So I'd shut the door, and then I'd get one of those dry erase markers, and on the screen, I would key my drawings out and then pose the, the, you know, the 3D model to that thing and then erase it, and then, you know... <laughs> So it was really backwards. So, uh, but it worked. Uh, it worked. Point, yeah, it worked. So, um, and then right when I got the hang of that thing, they switched, switched this to Maya and 3ds Max, and um, it was doing a little bit of animating on some video games there. Uh, ended up um, being asked to redesign Turok and creatures and that sort of stuff. So, uh, I became. I, I was a, I was literally the very first person of the concept department in 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 at acclaim, and then uh, and then they hired Thierry, which you you met Thierry. Yeah, I met I met him on Lightbox. <laughs> I didn't like. I knew his work for like ever since I discovered David. I I also knew Thierry's work as well by that time because like it was you guys were all the Seijin crowd Seijin and. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And conceptart.org. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. And a speed painting. Speed painting. Speed painting. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when we were like so excited. David was so excited the first time where he's like, "Oh my God, Spark commented on one of my things." You know, <laughs> <laughs> we were so it's so crazy, man. You know. Uh, yeah. But Thierry came in, and Thierry and I were the first concept department there, and we were doing all the video game, all the different titles. Like one day we'd yeah. work on this title, another day we'd work on that title. And at first, I didn't know how I was going to get along with that guy. Uh, <laughs> my art director is like, you're going to move your office to this office. You're going to share the office with this guy. And he's like, with well, that French guy? I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. you know. And it turns out we became best friends. <laughs> and we had the same sort of personality, you know, always playing jokes and pranks. So poor David became like our <laughs> <laughs> poor David. Man, I love him. <laughs> and then he started telling me, I guess they went to school together. So. They started telling me about all the stuff he used to do to David when they were rooming together in, back in industrial design school, like waking David up with pots and pans, literally like a cartoon, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Poor guy. So uh, it, it went from – so now I'm at at, at, um, at a claim, and then that ship went down bad, if you remember. They closed the doors down, and Chapter 11 and all this stuff happened. So I ended up uh, – freelancing in different studios. I got hired by uh, Joe Mad, Joe Mad Herrera, the comic artist. I don't know if you know Joe or not. He um, rings the bell. Yeah, he uh, he used to be an X-Men artist. Or I think, I think he still does X-Men stuff, but uh, I worked with him at NCSoft. He hired me and concept art there, and and then that didn't last very long again. <laughs> so uh, I moved there from, from that to our, another startup company, you know, just all over the place. And then we ended up uh, starting Steambot Studios. And that that had a great run, had a really good run. And then that all dissolved and that moved me. That period when uh, that studio dissolved to when I started getting regular work again, I think it's when I, when I really excelled. Well, I don't want to say excelled, but when my art like really... I was doing a lot of drawing, 
that's how I right. keep my sanity. That and falconry. You know, I was flying my bird this whole time as well. I was hunting with my bird. But um, I remember just drawing and drawing and drawing and all this stuff. And I started getting quicker. And, and one day I got this uh, email uh, from, I don't know if it was an email or t- maybe it was on Facebook or something. But Claire Wendling commented and said, I really love your stuff. I, I'm loving the stuff that you're doing. And Claire's one of my heroes. So I was like, whoa. Yeah, Claire is awesome. I met her at the THU. Yeah. It was a very, yeah, a very interesting person yeah. too. I actually, yeah. I, I, we worked together, but we didn't know each other on uh, Quest for Camelot. It was called, it was a really bad movie. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, she commented in that same day, Tara Whitlatch also sent me a, a, a message saying, God, you're, animal stuff is really great it's really inspiring and i was like wow terry Tor- whitlatch is inspiring yeah. you know and uh and then david a phone this all happened the same day david called me that night and he just said hey god your drawings are just going off the charts and i was like <laughs> what is this you know what's going on here you know so are I, they pulling a prank on me yeah are they pulling a prank <laughs> Trying to, like pump know? me <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's you know it's it's neat when colleagues and people that you admire start you know complimenting you and and now they're yeah. all dear friends Claire Claire and Terrell and you know, you know all all those people are dear friends now but that that period after that studio dissolved re, I really grew in, in my in my drawing strengths right I didn't yeah. do, I remember it was all traditional too I wasn't doing a lot of digital I just stopped doing digital because every time it seemed that every time I turned the Cintiq on or whatever, I was like, uh, you know, uh, just reminding me of, of the depression we're going through with the studio. So, <clears throat> but um, that led to the start of Expedition Art, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, with, with David. I called David and I said, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go outside and go back to what inspired me as a kid, you know, the wildlife documentaries and animals and these Ranger Rick magazines. <laughs> uh, and and I started going outside, and we started a, a, a forum, or what, what, is it a forum? Yeah, or whatever. And that led to let's just make this official. You know, we helped with a um, fundraiser in Los Angeles. We were going to be called the Art Explorers at first, but that name was taken, so we just used Expedition Art, which That's now a great name too. Yes, which now um, you know we're really proud to have helped with Rhino work and with. Um, the Sumatra stuff that we've done, yeah, you know, it's 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 a good feeling that you're making a little change in the earth or and educating and and people start asking what we are and and we're getting more recognition. It's, I think we've been around now. See, how long ago were we in Portugal? Five years ago, you said three three, three years. I want to guess about six seven years now with Expedition Art. And uh, it's growing little by little. It's hard because all of us have our own jobs, and now this, you know, this craziness that's going on is going to put a hand yeah. on some other stuff. But we move on, you know. So what get, what, what got you guys to like? Hey, let's do this. Because um, you, the way I mean, the team you have that is working with Expedition Art is crazy. You know, it's you, David. <laughs> You know, Terrell, you know, Ian, Ian and, Aaron. Uh, and Aaron. Yeah. Yeah, crazy artists. I mean, crazy in terms of like crazy good. Yeah. If I would have thought that, like if I would go back in time and tell my 12-year-old self that, that, that I was going to do that one day, I, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> it's crazy, man. You know, Ian McKegg, uh, for, you know, I, I don't get starstruck with a lot of people. Ian's a sweetheart, but it's just weird for me that, you know, that he that I don't know it's all it's all weird mention you know but so I think it's the passion I think I think that um, uh, it shows through my I guess through me the passion that I have for wildlife you know not 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 just necessarily like uh, birds of prey and big cats but just in general you know yeah when I when I went to go work with rhinos for the first year uh, I never thought I'd be going to Zimbabwe to work on rhino rhino, rhino conservation you know because a lot of people are uh, lean to the sexy animals, tigers and yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, and usually the big cats. You know, rhinos are like, <sighs> but uh, no, it 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 happened for a reason, you know, and 
we did a lot of uh, good work out there and opened up doors and starting to meet more like-minded people and cool the the clothing company some of the pants that that were Kevin designed at the time he got the inspiration from rhinos so it's it's a pant that's got like if you take like the plates and the soft skin in the middle you know so it's mm-hmm. a flexible spot so you know when you when you squat it stretches with you and it moves with you that's so, cool so um he said you know those things those were inspired by rhinos i'm going to give back to them you know which was great and and he did uh, the whole company did and we put together a, a little show a little art show at our flagship store in park city um aaron blaze came and terrell and christy and david it all came and it, it was fun we did some good stuff together and then uh aaron blaze and nick we got you know we got to know each other a little better and form that relationship and see what we're about and um I think it's just the passion of love of animals has yeah. done it for me because that's, that inspires creature design, right? Like, yeah, you know, one thing inspires another. I just felt that I'm at a position where I think I can use my artwork and I'm uh, competent enough to use my artwork to raise awareness and to educate as opposed yeah. to just creating a, a star Wars creature. Not that I'm working on star <laughs> Wars, but you know what I mean? Uh, I know what you mean, but, out of that, out of that mentality, all the creature designers, all the people, come back and say, "Hey, uh, I want to help." I want, I've I've never ran into an artist that hasn't said no, you know, as far or they volunteer, or it gets to a point where like, how can we help? How can we help? And yeah, we're still not that big where we can just accommodate everybody. So we're trying to fit everybody in projects that we that we have, you know. So, yeah. Well, did you? So what? What made you? What made you quit? I mean, you, I mean, I guess at this point you're you don't have too much engagement with entertainment industry anymore, right? No, um, other than my friends. Did you, did you get jaded with like just the how, how the business is done mm-hmm. in entertainment in general? I, I, it can be frustrating, I, right? It's yes, it is. Um, just personalities, um, the same roller coaster ride. Yeah. Um, the letdowns. Um, it just, I just got tired of it. And, and also it, it comes with the territory, I guess, you know, when you were in video games, I don't know how many studios I've worked for match where like they put you on board and then they lay you off, you know, and then you got to, I was lucky. I, I never had to experience that with uh, games. I did experience that with Aaron blaze. And yeah, I know domain. I about that. Yeah. Yeah, so, that was. So it, it, just imagine that you know, after a while, <laughs> you get used to it. You get a callus. Right. You know? So, but man, it just it, it that got old, and I I don't think it was good for me. It's not good for anybody. You know, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts you uh, uh, psychologically and emotionally. You know, friends are always there to help each other. But then now, uh, what used to be a, a studio of artists that work together, they're all let go, and now they're competing against each other for a job, right? And yeah. the, the great thing about our community is that once somebody gets their foot in the doorway, then, you know, friends help try to help. Out. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, I, I got tired of, of um, directors that I thought didn't know enough and didn't have skills. And then they're directing people that <laughs> could run in circles around them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and I, it, it, that that got old for me, man. You know, you know, somebody trying to tell me how to design something, and which comes with the territory, I know. But you know what I mean? That experience of like, you don't know what yeah. you're, dude. You know, or woman or whatever. You know, so uh, that I, I that got old. I needed. A, I I just found that I found more peace in freelancing, and I did that for a while. Uh, but I was always wanting to get that work done so I could start drawing my own stuff and sketching my own stuff. Right. So, right, right. You know, and, 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 and to get away from sword and sorcery and sci fi, which I love, I dearly love that stuff. It's, it, it made, it's who I am. It made me who I am. But to get away from that stuff, I went into nature, you know, start looking at uh, wildlife artists or, or, 
you're slowing down video so I could draw tigers, you know, or whatever it may be. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, it's very difficult to, to get to. Uh, I agree with you. It's like there are, there are, if you get lucky enough, there are some directors and art directors and oh, creatives that, that are great. Like you just work with them. It's like, oh, yeah, I, I totally understand where this is going. They give you enough room to explore. They give you enough room to actually make your own decisions too. Like the the best directors that I've worked with or production designers are the ones that under that that understand the design process, and they let they they give you ownership of what you're doing. Yeah. We, we obviously they will like fix this, fix that. You know, we have to adjust for like the dimensions of the set or whatever, sure. whatever that is, or, you know, the director wants like a very specific style. Can we, you know, get closer to that? But it's not like pixel peeping and like, oh, can you move <laughs> this crate a little bit to the left? <laughs> or, I, you know what, I like I liked the composition. Can you make 20 more? Because I, have, I haven't decided yet. It's like, well, you said you liked it, so why are you asking for 20 more, you know? It's like that kind of stuff just drives me up the wall, like right away. Yeah, you know, I... um. So I had a, a, I'm going to try not to mention names or, or companies. I worked at a, I art directed a big, huge uh, project. <laughs> I'm going to try to be very vague because I don't want to. Big, huge project. Yeah, okay. I, I directed a big, <laughs> huge project that we took on. and uh, Let's make it more vague. You art directed a project that could have been big or could have been small. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. It, it was just the strangest thing because uh, everything was going well until uh, you start running into inexperienced people, you know. Right. We had a production manager. You know, we we would do all these all this concept work, and then it got approved by the client. And after it was approved by the client, the client would say, "Oh, perfect. Okay." Uh, she would throw in a wrench and say, "Well, let me give you let me give you an example. Let's say we're designing a uh, a night, right?" And you designed a knight, and they love the knight. He looks, he's going to look good on his horse. And after it gets proved, they, she's like, okay, now is the knight's gloves leather or are they velvet? And then, uh, and then the, the client would be like, well, I never thought about that. You know, I, I, I'm relying on you guys to, 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 you know, to your expertise. Well, are they, are they, Okay, well, they're le le well. I guess they would be leather. Is it like a rawhide or is it like a suede? And I'm like, oh my god. So, so now the the character that's been approved, and she was happy with, is now you now you got to make velvet leather or what you know all these. And right. man, that just I was like, that was a final straw, man. I mean, and things that should be figured out beforehand and experience man just yeah they, they got this junior high girl to just try to you know run this whole thing and she may have been good at scheduling but my god you know she had no business stepping into like opening it, it, it just little things like that and, and i know that happens commonly but i just thought it was time for me to move on you know yeah i still the get worst. i still get called i still get uh asked uh hey would you be interested in this and that but um I can't, I can't do it. Not with, I'd love to, and I'm, 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 um, uh, honored and that I'm still even brought up. But, right. Uh, but no, no, I'm, I'm, it may be one day again, but yeah, just keep your sanity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more important. It's more important. Yeah. yeah. The worst, the worst thing that can happen is just to get, um, get someone an experience that also has ego. That's the worst. Like if someone is, if someone is inexperienced, uh, but at least they're like, pretty aware of it and they're trying to improve and and work with you because i worked with people like that that maybe didn't have enough experience and they were in the higher position but they were like super open and, and willing to listen and, and adjust you know or even ask for uh for for advice you know then it's like okay i i, I see where this is going you know we can work together and, and make it really good because this is for good of a project but if you have someone who's just like has no experience and then and then another layer of it throws you under the bus if something goes wrong because that happens a lot yeah yeah i was fortunate that you know i i've met people like that in my career like wor worked with people like that that was like oh i can i mean I, i've 
in most situations, not always, but in most situations, and it was very few and far between, I've seen that person do it to someone else. And I was like, oh, I better watch out because this can happen to me anytime. Yeah. Um, Things that you and, learn, man. That's experience. Yeah. Like. But yeah, but when you freelance, you just interface with one person and and then, yeah, who, who cares? Okay. Yeah, I just, you know, it, it's very strange that I, uh, um, just my whole journey, I think, where I'm at now, I've been, this is, this is the best company I've ever worked for. Um, right. Um, how, how big are you guys? I want to say probably a hundred people, maybe. That's, right. A lot of people don't know that, you know, independent. Uh, we don't pay any well-known actors or athletes to, to wear our stuff. Right. Uh, people, you know, we make it and people wear it, you know, yeah, I see it all over the place. Um, yeah, I've seen it in Ray. I've, I've said yeah, that before, yeah, before we started. Uh, yeah. But it's it just uh, the, the, the thought process of making clothing, you know, and, and what works and what doesn't work and, and, and the iterations of changing things is awesome. You know, we'll make a pen yeah. we all and fall in love with, but then we can we can change this to make it better and we're always making things better and always looking you know so yeah yeah and it just helps to what i feel very proud of is that we're a small company that still competes with the bigger companies you right people yeah. think we're just as big as patagonia who's one of the biggest but we're not you know and uh, like patagonia said, is crazy big yeah it's also all the yoga moms are, are wearing it <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah exactly exactly so yeah. It, it's a uh, uh, it, it's fun, um, and I get to do a lot of stuff uh, creatively and telling stories, and you know, trying to get a little more um, involved with that kind of stuff. So you know, shooting videos. Uh, I love yeah. photography. I love videoing. As you know, I do the little walkabouts that I go all over the place, and and you know, I've even been asked to uh, have professional people shoot me doing those things. But it wasn't my. It's not my intention to make those into like a show, right? I do. The, right. Yeah, I go out hiking. I have my iPhone. Something inspires me, and then I shoot it. It's not necessarily because I think if I was to make that a job, it would take the fun out of it. I think you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess it makes sense if you would have like, okay, I'm doing this, and I have like a very specific goal. I want to like raise awareness and maybe raise raise funds or maybe build this brand so that yeah. you know that oh, becomes sure. like something that that has a lot of voice. And having like a high production behind it yeah. helps to get more awareness. Yeah, I guess it comes down to how people how people are getting used to like higher production because of YouTube. You know, because you have you have YouTubers shooting like, oh, I'm just gonna do an iPhone review and they just I, I'm gonna use it with my red cameras like. What? Come on. <laughs> I think, you know, yeah, it's, I've gotten to meet a lot of, uh, I have a lot of friends that work in the wildlife um, documentaries. With right. With Geographic and BBC and Planet Earth and all that stuff. I've been lucky enough to go into that sort of yeah. ring of people. And it's neat to see uh, what they do, you know, creatively. Uh, it's just a tool, you know. Uh, people that have red cameras and good for them and that's what they do for a living. It's understandable. But then uh, you also see guys shooting with uh, iPhones yeah, know, and doing some amazing stuff. So yeah, it, yeah. I think it's all on how you how you use your tool, right? Uh, yeah, of, of course. course. Of, of course. course, having a huge production is going to help you um, achieve those things and the professionality. But man, I mean, I've seen some uh, – David's – David has uh, showed me that it's not it's not the tool, it's how you use it kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I've always liked. It would be difficult, too, like if you had red, like production crew going on a hike, like, oh, all animals now are gone for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Because, like, I have this loud crew, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, I've been, uh, in, you know, the last uh, outing, the last adventure that I've had before this corona thing hit is uh, um, I have a, a, a mountain lion project that I'm trying to do. But uh, I went out with a guy named Jeff Hogan, who's a camera guy for mm -hmm. Geographic and BBC. And he's filmed a lot of cool stuff. And, he's a, and he lives there in Jackson Hole. And he's been following these mountain lions, these same mountain lions for, I think, like eight years. 
Right. So uh, we went out and we went out tracking and and the things that I was, you know, he does have a red camera, but he uses like an A6400 mirrorless uh, more than he does. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's insane, man, you know, and he's like, oh, these cameras are great. You know, he sets up these camera traps for the mountain lions and, you, you know, and then again, I, I'm looking at it and it's how you use the tool, right? And, yeah, and for sure. Reference and you're like, wow, you know. So, yeah, most of the cameras now are g way better than you would you would need it crazy. for, you know. <laughs> Even like that new iPhone is just insane. Uh, what yeah. capabilities are right? Yeah. So uh, people get hung up on 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 Reds or whatever, which is fine, man. I'd love a red camera, but you know. I'm... Once iPhone gets like uh, raw file format, yep, I know exactly. <laughs> the whole business collapse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I think even there's like this a uh, black magic camera that's like three thousand dollars, twenty five hundred. Yeah, the six K. Yeah, shoots raw. It's insane. It's insane, man. It's insane. It's a small thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, I went out with uh, um, some guys that were shooting some stuff for us uh, for cool out in Santa Barbara, and the guy had a, a black magic, and I was like taken. He's like, oh, this thing's amazing. He was, I love it. He's like, it's so easy, you know. Yeah. Instead of this giant. He goes, I got the red, but the whole time he didn't have it. Yeah. You just, you just, I just, yeah, just you. I saw. It's, uh, no, it's the, 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 the <laughs> limit on that camera that oh. I use. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might, it might disappear. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm still here. Okay. Um, um, but yeah, that's the last outing that I had is I, I got to see a professional guy, uh, and his tools and what he's using. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So. It's always it's always fun to learn, and it's also neat to be with a, a different group of people. It's um, it feels so strange. It's like another life. Uh, let's just say the the concept art world. All of us, you know, the Ian McKegs and all. Yeah, and then uh, we all you know go to Lightbox and see each other or whatever. Yeah, uh, I got to do that with uh, with the nature documentary people i went to like the oscars of documentaries in jacksonville film festival and i'm sitting around looking at all these people that i love you know that are, are work that i admire and uh, and same thing with uh, um growing up one of the films that had a huge influence on me was this and you probably have seen it i don't know it was a national geographic uh special on these hy hyenas and lions like eternal enemies it was called i believe and this, I haven't seen that. So check it out if you if you get a chance. Uh, it's a husband and wife team of um, that shot this interaction between lions and hyenas in the middle of the night, right? Night cameras at the time. This is I think it's like 1988, I believe. But that made such an impression on me. And then after that, I started following all of their work. And their names are Beverly and Derek Jobert, and they live in Botswana, and they're amazing filmmakers. And she's an amazing photographer. Well, now um, you fast forward now to now, and I'm working with them, uh, f dear friends with them, uh, and I, I just find that so so weird, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. from the from the fan side, I guess you know. Yeah, it's 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 cool when you when you have your heroes, then you meet with them, and then you work with them. Yes, yeah, and yeah. then they become friends. Yeah. You know, that's, that's that's like the best. Yeah. Uh, the best yeah and but the world you're in is not as saturated as concept art you know i feel like it's 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 it, it's still a very passionate world mm -hmm. you know concept art be, is slowly or art art industry is slowly like becoming a commodity almost you know yeah with the advent of social media and how widespread it is it's just much more accessible but it also means you know more people are doing it more competition uh, it still maintains this quality of like it feels sm it's large but it feels small uh you can get in circles of friends mm -hmm. and connections matter a lot yep. even though it's how saturated it is okay. it's what you said like when when people get laid off and and then one person latches on the company and then they are hiring it's like get this and this and this guy because they are great you know yeah and connections matter so much i remember when i moved to naughty dog uh, and I, I've proven myself to be because, like, when you start, when you start, when you're starting, mm -hmm. it's one thing. They like, like they you want to build a trust, even even how, no matter how good you are, you know, no matter how well you do, you want to build that 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 trust. Um,
But I remember after a while, you know, if there were people that I worked with before in other companies, like HR would come over to us like, hey, what do you guys think about this yes. guy? You know? Yes, yes. And uh, and it was like, yeah, this guy, hell yeah, let's let's, let's try <laughs> to get him. Or this guy, no, this guy is an asshole. <laughs> you know, he's always been an asshole. Yeah. So yeah, maybe maybe a no. And culture matter. Like once you get a once you get a company that grows into larger numbers, the culture matters so much. Yeah. Because you know the saying like, there's uh, it's one thing to be uh to be good good at something right but if you're an asshole like no one want to work with oh, you oh exactly yeah no exactly and then and then also you know like you want to make sure that if you have like really good people working for you do you want to surround them with as good or better yeah yeah you I, know in, in all fields too i agree uh and once the politics and like once the culture collapses and the, the politics come come in that's where like all shit just comes down and <laughs> and just collapses from from that point on yeah i've noticed that with every company i worked with every single company so wants to sad. yeah it's so sad i mean that's, it's that's egos basically that's what you just uh said about steambot exactly is that what happened <laughs> oh no <laughs> i remember steambot when you guys started like and then and the projects you guys were working on that was like a huge inspiration for a lot of people yeah I do remember that. Yeah, it was it was it was good at the time, but you know, I always uh, Dave and I talk a lot, and we always say, you know, it's good that, that those things happened. They were hard to do at the time, but you move on to better things, and yeah, um, you know, you're you're happy you're happier where you're at, and you always think back to yourself, wow, if that would have kept if that would have worked, I wouldn't have been where I'm at now, because who knows what I would what project or what I right exactly right so. No, I'm I'm super thankful that all that happened, even though I wouldn't have said that at the time, you know. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't know. I mean, the uh, the freedom that I get, uh, the people that I work with, uh, I still like to be uh, challenged. I think that's really really important as an artist, right? Right. Uh, at some point, I'd like to do more, um, get more involved in actually like more of the design design work. Uh, mm -hmm. some jackets and things like that. I have some ideas, but it's 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 funny when you think you know something and then you come into that world and you actually don't know squat. And you, oh, <laughs> you know that's humbling. But then you learn, right? Now, yeah. now you want to know what you know what to do. It's uh, I've always I've always liked that. I don't like doing anything half ass. Um, it's not never been my my forte. I, it's I don't feel satisfied as a person if that happens. That's the reason that. Yeah. That's the reason that I don't play a guitar, man. Um, I get so jealous of people that play guitar. I look at Aaron Blaze, and he always brings that out and starts playing. Um, I started learning to play the guitar, and then my art suffered for it because I wouldn't do anything else. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, you get, like, obsessed. I'm obsessed with it now, you know? And um, so I was like, no, I'll just be a fan of guitar music, you know? So Yeah. And then go back to the things that... that that you love like nature and hiking and tracking. I'm obsessed with tracking. I've always have been. Uh, and then you look back and realize how much life has taught you along the way and that you know more than what you thought you knew just, you know, from life teaching you. That's, yeah. that's been, that's been really, uh, really cool to watch, you know, going out, where, going out with trackers, uh, and, and seeing what they're looking for or, or changing environments. That's been the big thing for me, uh, going from Texas to Utah. Uh, so it's like, it's like changing planets, right? Uh, right. Out in West. I've never, Texas. I've never been to either of those. Yeah, well, <laughs> so I don't know. I grew, I grew up in an area, uh, uh, which is the West Texas. And then our, um, family property was an area called, uh, the big bend area of Texas where, it's the rock where the Rocky Mountain ends, but it's part of the what's called the Chihuahuan Desert. Mm -hmm. And I got to learn a lot about the plants, about the wildlife, you know, um, learning to live in that area, et cetera, et cetera. And then all of a sudden you get changed to the middle of the mountains in Utah where you, 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 you start see, you do see junipers, you do see pines, but what is this plant? Why do, it looks edible? Is it, you know, so that's, right. that's my, <laughs> that's what that's what my world spins in my head. So uh, um, it's been really cool for me, just change of atmosphere and and I've always um, loved the mountains and exploring. So uh, it's been great, especially the um, 
the southern part of Utah, the desert part with the uh, all the ruins, and you've probably seen me walk through a bunch of those things. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 incredible, man. I, I wanted to be an architect. It's a nice backyard to have too. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, what's what's really nice about Salt Lake City is you go four hours south and you're in Moab, um, which is where the arches is and yeah, all beautiful Red Rock area, and then you go four or five hours north and you're in Jackson Hole near Yellowstone. You know, so yeah. oh man, it's it's just been a, a giant playground. I just feel so fortunate of all the things that I've learned and done and the people that I'm with. It's just it's just really strange, you know. There's a one of my friends is a, a biologist named Boone Smith. And Boone, uh, I've seen him on so many National Geographic uh, specials. He hosts uh, Big Cat Week, you know, like like kind of like Shark Week, but Big Cat Week. Right. And uh, Boone is a uh, I think like a fourth generation mountain lion tracker. Um, his his great grandfather used to do it, and then so his knowledge has been passed on. And I've seen him go into Afghanistan to track um, and trap uh, snow leopards. And now here he is, uh, years ahead, you know me joining him out there. It's just really surreal. Uh, he's just a person like anybody else, but it's, it's just neat to see and hang with people that have a passion for something. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's very helpful in people, whether it's a, a carpenter, whether it's a sculptor, anybody with a deep passion affects you and what you love. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, that does does make sense like the, i only i only surround myself with people with passion too yeah yeah uh, like i said that's the only reason that i came here to um to this company is because when i met kevin and when i saw how he is um i i was like man this guy this guy's still really passionate about what he's doing so i i, I yeah. there's there's no way i'm gonna say no and uh and i love how he challenges you know, he's a lot like me where we get too many ideas uh, and it's hard to to point down to uh, I don't want to say it's hard to focus because it's not really focus. It's like I just get way too. I, I have that's my problem. I have too many ideas and too many love. You have to learn how. That's, to. Uh, that's the curse of the creative person. <laughs> I was listening to uh, Jordan Peterson talk talking about this very subject actually, mm -hmm. but he was comparing it to. Um, so he was talking about Silicon Valley specifically uh -huh. because there's many parallels, you know, in terms of like how the startup companies are are made and how it actually applies to what we do as artists, you know, because people who start those companies are very creative people. Like they come up with an idea for something that didn't exist, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so you have to be very creative to com come up with a, an idea like that. Yeah, yeah. But none of those companies are run by creative people. They're all run by like business uh, conservatives. Sure, sure. Because all, those are the people that's like, okay, you have that idea. Let's let's now hunker down and, and actually make it happen Next. instead of like throwing more ideas. Yeah. In. <laughs> you know, let's oh, let's yeah. test this assumption first. Yeah. If it doesn't work, we'll pivot and do something else. Awesome. So you need that kind of like a person that has like you know more of like a, a quote-unquote sane approach to business. <laughs> yeah. That's been that's been Christy for us. Thank goodness for her. Um, right. Because she always said it was like herding cats. <laughs> uh, me, Terry, David, everybody. But once we got to work and we, you know, we, we did a good job, but it is. And, and the, the, the hard, the, the really difficult part that I've always found for her is that she's super creative too. And she, uh, she loves art. But she's never gotten a chance to um, to show it, you know, or to practice it like she would love. Right. So, uh, uh, so being away from that, I think uh, she's had a lot of inspiration from from Aaron and Terrell and everybody, you know, being in that world because she's uh, she's super creative. But she also, God, I mean, it, it'd be cool to have that side of the brain as as she does. I think. I think. Yeah, just to I, kind I'm, of like. I'm a mess, man. Um, uh, I don't know if you can see my my desk back there. It's about to avalanche of art supplies. You know, this little area here is, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, but it, passion is is what what brought me here and and keeps me here, right? And I also find you know outside of work, it's awesome when you 
is it really work when you love doing it kind of thing, right? It's, it's, right. it's, it's crazy. Um, outside of work, I, I draw it at work or, or edit or whatever I'm doing and then come home and I can't wait to get home to draw and edit here as well. Uh, whatever adventure I've been on or where I'm going or what my plans are. Right. So yeah. It, yeah. D- d- distilling that through throughout the whole group I and mean, that, as a young kid, seeing those magazines where uh, I used to get these wildlife magazines and they would show like these artists that are painting and they're like black and white pictures of these artists painting in Africa and there's like a whole bunch of artists. I always thought, man, I hope one day I get to do that. So <laughs> so taking Aaron and, and uh, Peter Hahn and all those guys to Africa last year was just, oh man, it was so awesome. Yeah. yeah. How do you how do you guys organize that? Because I, you know, oh. you you started with basically a you know kind of out of an artist collective. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, we all like wildlife, yeah. and maybe we should do something about it, right? Yeah. And that's how basically expedition. That's my assumption on how sure. expedition art came together. Exactly. But how? What, what was what was the the thing that made the the step from, you know again like oh we have ideas to like let's actually make them happen and execute and actually do do one of those things because i remember the first i I've, i've knew about expedition art vaguely through you know david uh because uh, because he used to share that and through aaron i used to see some of that stuff as well yeah, yeah. but then like i really got to explore or discover exactly what you guys do on thu because i sat through that presentation you guys did it was like Oh. my mind was blown dude it was like <laughs> what the hell man that was fun that was a lot of fun i mean it's it, it's it was like for me it's like okay i didn't know because I, I you know i live in this entertainment kind of riddled industry and mostly interface with people that are pretty much in the same kind of business that i am but then I get to see like really awesome artists doing something like that was like okay like i've seen national geographic doing this stuff yeah but not but not you guys you yeah know? i just thought I, i thought it'd be cool if it was like a, a um a, an organization a society of artists that uh that would do this and run it and we're not the first to do it i think we're we're uh a, 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 we're a different take on it there right. is a there is a society of animal artists that traditionally started um doing this but um a little different than than what than what we do i just right thought, you know um they're very traditional oil painters and so and so and i think aaron i think aaron was part of their uh, board at one time you know so gotcha. they, they don't under they don't understand the antique or, or or digital art or it's not really art or whatever they're very traditional guys and it's also um in my opinion uh it's just a a close group of people i think um so yeah, but not like- I, I, i thought to myself mache I'm, i'm gonna get i know a lot of people so i'm just gonna ask it doesn't hurt to ask right you never you know you're either gonna get a yes or a no so i just thought it'd be awesome to have this organization with artists mostly from the entertainment industry if you look really look at it i think they're all from the entertainment industry Yeah, we have, I did uh, Star Wars. Now I'm painting El Tigres. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, uh, I think we have. Uh, we're really lucky to have a uh, a man that I, one of my art heroes, uh, Greg Beecham, who is a an amazing oil painter, um, and I'm just honored. You know, he's he joined us to Africa, and uh, the whole me meeting him was again like sort of like. Um, I would put it in the same vein as like me meeting Frazetta. Um, I've, I've always loved his work, and and now we're really good friends and and hanging out together. And and it's what I've liked is he comes from a complete different art society, right? Um, he's he's very tickled to be hanging out with us because it's a whole different side of things. He's a gallery artist, right? Right. Traditional gallery artist, and. Um, he invited me to the first time to go out to photograph uh, grizzlies out in Yellowstone because him and some other artist friends of his did it, and I got it, I got asked, and 
I said, yes, I'd, I'd love to go. And I was honored to go and I got to meet him. And, and I was sort of like an odd bird out the questions I was getting asked from them. And it's just a whole different world, you know, that, that they don't know about. And right. um, uh, with the animation and the concept art and the digital. Um, and then I, I sort of glued those worlds together a little bit as for, for him, at least uh, introducing them to like Peter Hahn to uh, Jock Cooper, uh, Aaron. Yeah. And, and, and it's been awesome. And he's just one of the guys. And, and we have a, um, a group of people that sort of, uh, they're dear friends now. And hopefully if things clear up by May, we're supposed to be going to Yellowstone in May to photograph bears and mountain lions. And we'll see how, how that goes. But, um, that all, became about because Aaron, because Greg Beecham invited me over to, to that trip. Um, I just always thought art is such a great tool to educate people. Um, you can debate with people all day and I have, and you won't change anybody's mind if their mind's already made up. Right. Yeah. So what a powerful tool to use art to change, uh, somebody's opinion, you know? Yeah. Back when that, Lion was shot by that dentist. You remember that whole story about C Cecil the lion? Cecil the lion. Yeah, I remember that. Cecil the lion. Um, um, it was it was in Zimbabwe, uh, close to close to my heart because that's a lot. Of, I have a lot of dear friends in Zimbabwe, and once I heard the story from one side of the fence and then the other side of the fence, it didn't matter if it was right or wrong. Um, I did a I did a painting of that of that cat. And I never said a word. I never said, you know, dumb dentist or, or whatever and nothing. I put that painting up on a forum and I got attacked like crazy. It was just a, it was just a painting. I never said anything. <laughs> uh, I, I was, oh, he's a Cecil lover. Or I, I love the fact that uh, I used to follow that guy, but he's a Cecil lover. And I was like, what the hell? I never even, you know. Well, kudos to them because they re recognized that it was him. It could have been a different line for all that I know, right? Right, right, right. But but uh, that triggered something in my head thinking, man, I triggered that much debate with just posting a painting, you know. So anybody who wants to go shoot rhinos or hunt rhinos, uh, you know, you do some rhino work and, and put the education out. Because I think that's the biggest weapon that we have for anything, the biggest weapon against that type of stuff is education, right? Um, right. So, what is it, what is your take on this? Because, like, I obviously, you know, the only side of the well, there's two sides of the fence, obviously, oh, always with, with everything. Mm -hmm. The only one that not necessarily made sense to me, but but it was kind of logical was when I was whenever I listened to Joe Rogan mm -hmm. and he talks about conservation. Yeah. And and how he preface that and i agree with it 100 percent that it is all fucked up it's yeah. fucked up that that hunt, like you have to kill animals in order for them to survive mm -hmm. because otherwise they will be poached to death anyways <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, yeah so it so i think there's truth on both sides Manche. this is just my opinion uh, yeah i mean um i'm not anti-hunting i'm anti-poaching um yeah but uh, so, some animals, and, and I'm, and this is just me, my opinion. Um, you, you see two sides of the fence. Um, you, you know, you hear, you hear somebody say, "Oh, there's a, there's not a shortage of lions. There's this many lions in, in Africa, and, and we can shoot them. And if you shoot one, it feeds a village, and this and that." Well, I. How much truth is there, right? A lot of guys are filling their pockets up with that money, and the village is probably just get, or you know, the village is probably getting a small percentage of it, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe there's probably what it is. Yeah. A lot of corruption. Yeah, it's a lot of corruption. A lot, a lot of corruption. <laughs> even, even in, even with the uh, dehorning the rhinos in Zimbabwe, uh, I remember the one of the vets telling me, um, you know, we, we would give the rhinos to the authorities, to the rangers, and then they would go, supposedly, they, and then they put a microchip in the, in the horn and it would go to um, to a uh, vault, you know, this vault yeah. or whatever. And one of the uh, vets... Is that vault in China instead? Yeah, no. <laughs> probably a lot of truth to that. 
but what he what he would did what he did tell me was like I, it doesn't matter. I just want to keep this animal alive, right? Right. The thing was to keep them alive, and if they want to keep the the rhino horn in a vault or China or whatever, but at least these rhinos are safe and nobody's going to poach them because their horns are gone. And that seemed to be working. It seems to be working. But there is a lot of corruption, uh, even in hunting. Um, I personally can't shoot, uh, couldn't shoot a, a lion or a, or a cougar or anything, uh, even if it was legal. I just can't morally. Yeah, you know, I just right. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work for me? Uh, I know that there's like this whole thing about coyote hunting because there's too many in this and the other. Um, Isn't I, it true that? if the more you hunt them the more they they uh yeah. actually yeah they do uh the yeah they litter propagate. they propagate more smart animals yeah yeah and and there's a great book by dan flores called coyote america um that i recommend anybody read even if you're not into animals or coyote, any it's just a, i mean who would have thought a, a coyote book would be that great and it's phenomenal it's a great book but i had a i had a pet coyote growing up <laughs> Uh, wow. <laughs> not, not, I, How did that happen? Well, uh, a neighbor had stolen a coyote pup from an oil field in West Texas. Oh, I see. And uh, they brought it. They moved uh, two houses down for me. And she uh, uh, she roamed the, like a dog, and it was a coyote. And then they were there for a couple <laughs> That's of months. So fucking crazy. Yeah, they, they, they were there for a couple of months, and then they left. They moved away, and they left her. And uh, I felt we felt bad for her, so my grandmother started feeding her in the front door. Her name was Nikki. Uh, started feeding her in the front door, and um, she just became a pet. I mean, we kept her. We had dogs in the backyard, but Nikki would sleep on our front door because we fed her. I put a collar on her. I took her to the vet one time, <laughs> and. <laughs> And what was the vet's reaction? Well, I probably not not jaded because of all the I, I mean, watching the Tiger, Tiger King. King. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, the funny thing is, is like, it's like, what is this? That's, yeah. that's not even a big cat. What's we, going on? <laughs> we shaved her. We shaved her tail. We used to shave her tails because it was all bushy. Right. She was a sweetheart. She led us too. She was she was super sweet. She was really a, a, aloof, kind of elusive. Wasn't like a dog, but she she would she would sit next to you and you could pet her and everything. Um, I took her, our vet was this, uh, big time cowboy. I mean, it was one of these guys that you don't make an appointment. He's open from five in the morning to noon. You show up and, uh, uh, it's just this cowboy. And I, I think he's still alive. Elrod. Um, I remember I, uh, my friend Ben took me and we took this coyote and we put her up on the, on the, you know, on that little table. And he was preparing shots. I was going to get rabies shots and all this stuff. And he was preparing all this stuff. He had never even looked at the at the dog yet. He came in. He looked at me, said hi, and started looking up in the cabinet, started working. He goes, you know, that's a coyote you got there. You know, without even, <laughs> without even looking at her. <laughs> and I said, yeah, it is. And he goes, all right, you know, come here, girl. And then he, you know, did everything to her. But right. just, not even looking at it. It was just like something out of a weird movie, man. It was just like this Texas A uh, and M veterinarian. Uh, That's so funny. But she was really cool. Uh, she ended up the man who lived next, the man who owned the house next to us, uh, had a had a, a ranch or a farm in Arkansas, and he asked if he could have her. And uh, yeah, he took her, and then a year later he came by and I asked, "How's Nikki?" He goes, "Nikki's fine." doesn't bother the chickens or nothing, you know, so she went to a good home, you know, uh, it's crazy. So crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing like, Oh man. Like Tiger King, you know? Yeah. Tiger, I was watching, I was like, well, first, first, my first reaction was like, well, what the hell? But then this, oh, it's Texas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was just, just really shitty. You know, that's the way most of these sanctuaries end up, right? Uh, people buy, a a mountain lion cub or something, you know, and you get yeah. out them. Hell, I, I worked at a blockbuster video warehouse and one of the kids in there uh, that was working with us, his dad was an optometrist and they had like this huge ostrich farm or something and they bought a, a, a young black bear, like a cub. And it was so cool. We used to go over there and we played with it a couple of times and 
And he started, and then it got to a point where like, yeah, let's go play with a, with I forget his name. Let's go play with a bear, but you gotta put welding gloves on, you know. <laughs> and, then, and then it got to the point where he's just like, it, it got donated to a sanctuary. So yeah, that's so sad, man. It's really it's sad. pretty sad. I mean, I, I like that the documentary is like uh, Tiger King comes come out because you get an, a, a little bit more awareness how how crazy this whole world is. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, for all of the for the for those sanctuaries or whatever they are, those animal places, uh, there there's good ones for for all those bad ones. It, it's it's like like you said about the uh, uh, the corruption part of it, right? Yeah, there are some some amazing sanctuaries that actually do well and help, as opposed to this tiger petting and all that kind of nonsense. I even think so. I went to a, a talk. Uh, are you familiar with those monks that had all those tigers in, I, I don't remember where in Asia, that tiger temple? You, no. Are you familiar with that? No. There was all these Buddhist monks that had all these tigers out. And people would go there and take pictures with them. And apparently that they, they had raised them. And, and they, they were all about uh, education and saving tigers. And, and they're monks. You know, it was, it was legit monks. And... Uh, I went to a talk with a, a photographer named uh, Steve Winters, and he's a National Geographic photographer, and he he went there and photographed for Nat Geo and caught some fishiness going on. And if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, by the end of it all, he and his wife ended up shutting that place down because they did some investigative work, and it, and, and it was corrupt again. Yeah, yeah, it could have started as a good thing, right? I mean, yeah. no, like you, you, you start off wanting to do a good thing and, and then you end up like that Carol lady, um, you know, with a, a, a thing in your hands to make money and whatever. So it's crazy, man. But so it's, crazy. Yeah. You know, I, you... go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I, your, I, uh, your thought. You know, you, I, I always, uh, and, and I would never do this, but like, oh man, I would love to have a mountain lion. Oh, it'd be so cool. You know? And uh, you see this 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 whole thing show up, and, and, and the types of people that have them, and it's just it just it's just it's just nuts, man. You know? Yeah, it just goes I, crazy I, real quick. I, I do think for all the you know for all those bad ones, there are good ones out there. You know, just like anything yeah. else, just like anything else. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And I guess same with you know the uh, the African, you know. Uh, conservatories mm. but like places where people hunt all that stuff yeah there's probably it's just like with um with all the uh donation places or yeah. or um you know what, what you call those uh uh, uh, non-profits. uh non, non, non-profits yeah yeah you know there's there's you you can find the ones that are really legit and put try to put all the donations towards the right cause yeah and there are the other ones where it's only one percent goes because like 99 percent is operational you yeah. know? it's like what the yeah. hell yeah so yeah we're not in that 99 percent for sure <laughs> uh we're you know we, we end up losing money actually we, we all the money that we raise and, and we donate 100 percent of it i mean we're at, yeah, how do you how do you organize that yeah stuff so right now we're at, a, art? we're at a, we're at a point right now where uh I've only, I think we've only paid a couple of people, Mache, and that was to help put our book together that we sold. Yeah. Christy handles all that. She's the one, she's the, uh, the brains behind all of it. Um, we've never paid ourselves. We've never made money for ourselves. And we, we're not at that point, but we're at a point right now where we need to start thinking about how to, how to keep this going and how to make money to keep it going. Because, yeah. Uh, you know, we can't be, um, you know, out of our pockets all the time. I mean, I guess we could if we had a lot of money, but uh, it's it's at a point where like we need to have a, a conversation and, and and see how how to direct this thing and, and make it grow more. Because in all in all, you know, in 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 a re- in a dream world, I would love for this thing to be as big as like Wild Aid, right? Or a mm-hmm. World Wildlife Fund or whatever. It would be awesome. But but I would uh, but specifically always artists. Uh, run you know yeah always uh, that's the main thing is to, uh, using art to, to change the world you know so yeah. i i did come off on a tangent that i just that just came back to me about the lion hunting like uh like joe rogan and those guys have discussed um 
you see people talk about there's no shortage of, of lions. Let's just take the number 50,000. There's 50,000 lions in Africa. And uh, um, there's plenty for people to shoot and kill or whatever and mount. But the, the, those guys that are throwing those numbers out are usually people that are including all the numbers to all those weird sanctuaries of breeders, right? Uh, not to the wild lions. Does that make sense? So they, yeah. they throw these outrageous numbers out of lions. Um, but they're including the counts of, of all the, you know, all those places that have lions that breed lions for shooting or whatever, those, yeah. you know, those breeding facilities. And that's not right to count those particular lions as part of the population because we're talking they're about fully free. I, they're in the reserve. Yeah. You know, I've, yeah. Always, I've always, I always have always hoped that people like, uh, like Derek Jobert, I, I wish one day he'd go on um, on Joe Rogan and talk um, from a different perspective how uh, Botswana has been um, successfully making safaris without the hunting part aspect of it, you know? Right. So, and I'm not saying hunting is, is wrong. Uh, it's just the poaching part that gets carried away, right? Yeah, poaching and, I mean, tro trophy trophy hunting, you know, yeah, to, a point, to, a, to a certain degree. It's it's uh, it's definitely something like ah oh, I wish I mean I wish the the world was perfect uh, but I'm pretty sure the more I guess the more awareness is around that subject and less shouting and yelling mm -hmm. I think that's what kills the discussion like as you said before like it's very difficult to to change people's minds and shouting at someone like oh you're a moron like oh. well that's not gonna change anything you're actually making that person like di di dig uh, their heels even even more oh yeah sure. like that's not changing anything yeah that's, that's why i never paid attention like you said to to politics because like i just cannot stand that like people calling each other morons like it's a person oh, like, they just have a different opinion you know yeah. and and it's so dismaying like even now i kind of quiet down a little bit but you still see people like, dude. Everyone, everyone is in it. Like everyone, everyone is facing this this whole thing, the coronavirus. Sure. And uh, and I feel very bad for people that are hit by it the most, uh, that lose their job. They've been working in the industries that just cannot hold on, with sure. everything being shut down. It's terrible, and that's gonna cause like severe issues for like regular people. Mm -hmm. And then you have, and then you have those. I don't know. I don't know why people do that. Like argue, this is my I I ideology, and it's like, listen to me. I'm so important. Like, yeah. Like, are you are you so important? Like, do you think that a ra like a, an average person that just lost their job, and like is waiting for that government money to survive? Yeah. Oh wow. Really gonna think about who is the president or who, who isn't? Like, what's the politics? No, no. They just want to survive. It's like it happened. It, what happened is not their own fault yeah and instead of like yelling at each other like maybe we should just like you know <laughs> do something together to to get to get the world better like that that's that's what that's one of the things i, I hate about politics people just people just become very tribal they don't want to listen to one another they're just like tribes it's I, almost cultish <laughs> yeah no it, it almost is you know i i don't i don't get it either that's why that was why I thought on our end of the spectrum, using art uh, to do the talking for you. Yeah. Because uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, I guess, or whatever they say. Art is, art is louder than words. Um, it, it, just, it just changes so many people's minds, hopefully. And I know I've talked to several folks that, uh, about hunting. and Because, you know, even those, the trophy hunting stuff, uh, like, I don't understand... Um, I don't understand it, but the the people that want to shoot a rhino or, or hunt, they say, I'm going to go hunting rhinos, and, and you don't hunt a rhino, you, you go shoot it. Yeah. Uh, it's just like shooting a horse in a stall. They don't move. Uh, same thing with lions. I mean, we drive all over the place, and the lions are laying down under a shade. <laughs> and then you drive up to them, they stand up and look to see who you are, and then lay back down to sleep. That's not really hunting, right? That's more of a... yeah shooting you know I'm, I'm gonna go shoot something elephants the same way I don't, I don't i don't get it um but i don't know man i mean to each their own and 
as long as it's legit and uh, I know even some legit stuff I, I disagree with but um, I just try to do my part and, and, and educate people as best I can you know because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna yell <laughs> Like, yeah, I, I I don't think revolutions help. They usually cause more more damage and 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 uh, and disruption that people really would would like to see. Even if you're like for re revolutionary changes, mm -hmm. it's like the the unintended consequences of how it's disrupting the the status quo. Yep. might be worse than you think. You know, yep. uh, and I agree. Education just like bringing attention and having a, a long conversation it takes a long time to to change people's minds oh yeah a long time if you if you, well, if, you can do it yeah they can absolutely yeah. they can absolutely they can i uh uh my thought is uh bring something good into the world aaron blaze always says it right and i agree uh i just i just think that he is showing the beauty of of outdoors showing animals in their habitat you know give us something to think about as far as we're you know we're not the only important ones on this planet kind of thing yeah so you know that brings inspiration which brings out me uh producing artwork uh inspiring others to hopefully do the same uh i think it's i think it's a really powerful tool that we have yeah uh and and we have such uh such a tool to story tell to uh um you know, for all of that. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it's all been, it's all been fun for me. And now hanging around with like-minded people, going to Africa, taking folks with us, drawing out there with them. It's almost like a, like a dream come true. You know, that like it, like it, it makes me feel good. It's good. It's good for the soul. <laughs> it's yeah. So, you know, yeah, I need to, I need to move out from LA, dude. It's yeah, slowly I'm killing me. <laughs> David, I was really happy David did the move. Um, yeah. He's really happy uh, where he's at other than this coronavirus stuff, but hopefully this stuff will pass. I really think that the, again, the media sort of blows things out of proportion. That's what they're for. Yeah. I don't, I don't read, I don't read media. I don't, I've, 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 I was paying attention to it because I wanted to know what's going on. Uh, and, after like fourth or fifth article where they are like basically making it just clickbait and, and Armageddon, like just yeah. ring the bells for like, you know, chicken little kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's like, you know what? And then you compare it to like CDC information or, you know, Dr. Fauci's recommendation or sure. any of those. It's like, wait, I, I know it's serious, but it's not like we're all going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Or like they bring up numbers where, and here's, here's the, here's the fucked up part. Like it's a numbers game and, and we're talking about actual people, you know, like when you have a story where it's like one child or something yeah, yeah. died from something, that's just like heartbreaking and, and, you, and you're like really experiencing it. Yeah. yeah. But, 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 but now it's a numbers game. It's almost like, Oh my God, hundred thousand people going to die. It's yeah. like, all right, you, you make it so that it's almost like a numbers game for you. It's like, Oh, the, the higher we can get, the, the more news we can do, you know? Yeah. It's, almost. It's, 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 I, I know I should, I mean, I pay attention to it, but it's I, I try, almost criminal to me. And I don't, I don't, I try to stay away from it, man. It makes, it, it depresses me too much. Yeah. Uh, not, I know it's real and I know it's going on, but I just try to not to, to limit limit the amount of time I spent to it, I guess I should say, right? Yeah. Try to stay with something creative. I saw that, uh, you know, The Office, that series? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the guy that played Jim, I forget the actor's name. He's got a good news station now or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, fucking no, Joe Koshinsky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, he had uh, Michael Joe on. Joe Koshinsky is... Uh, is uh... God, I can't remember his name. He did the the Quiet Place too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gosh, what's his name? I know I can't. I I just keep saying Jim. <laughs> but he had he had. Uh, I even forget Michael's name, the actor. Um. Anyway, there he he had he had Michael on the show not too long ago, and that was great. Yeah. But he's like, uh, I'm gonna do a good news station, you know, or whatever. I think it's been around for a little bit, right? That, yeah, that good news thing. Yeah, that was fun to fun to listen to. 
yeah. it's funny to see all those like personalities and you know like uh, late night show people doing it from home it's so cringy it's like me yeah. oh like when there's no laugh track it's actually not funny anymore <laughs> i've ruined friends with somebody uh not too long ago i forgot i just, I just told uh I just recently told my brother to watch Friends without the laugh track. It's like it's crazy, you know. Oh, there's like a video of uh, there's video like video series where they remove laugh tracks and like pause specifically in specific moments, and it makes all characters look like psychopaths. <laughs> <laughs> That's man. That's yeah, it's fun. funny stuff. Yeah, no, but you know, uh, I'm hanging in there, uh, trying to keep myself. Thinking positive that this is going to pass, uh, creating artwork, trying to uh, put something good in the world, you know. Yeah. Sort of twists. Uh, uh, you know, thank. I, I don't mind being cooped up to a point because my, I, I, you know, I always escape to the mountains every chance that I get. So that's kind of been a, a settling point. But other than that, I just create more art. You know, working from yeah. home. Um, it's been a little bit of a task just because uh, there's a little bit of a separation. It's not like freelancing from for a, for a movie or, or a game because there's a lot of interaction with people, like with designers, you know, yeah. certain pants, you know, what are these going to do? How do we tell these, the story, um, et cetera, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really strange times. I mean, you know... Um, I've, I've, I've said on, I think on the previous podcast too, to me, I mean, I've been working from home for a couple of years now. Oh, sure. Sure. And, uh, and this, this project that I'm on right now, I actually did commute for a while, like for a couple of months, but only like half a week. And in the beginning it was like, it's a nice change of pace, but then like quickly after it's like, okay, I gotta do it because I need to, but if I didn't have to, I wouldn't do it. I would never do it again. You know? Yeah. yeah. And so, and I was, I would always talk with, with, you know, with friends and artists that work in the industry and I, I get it. Like you want to go out and hang out with friends in the, con like be in the, be in the studio. It's like a different environment, different sure. vibe yeah. to it. Yeah. You know, there's, there's benefits of that. But it's like, I always, ever since I left being in, in a studio and worked freelance, I always thought being in a studio was stupid to me. It's like, <laughs> I just hate it, man. Like, well, not hate it. It's just like, there's so many downs, downside, downsides of, uh, of doing that, that I just never found, well, like, what's the reason for me to do it? You know, I, I'm way more productive when I'm at home. Yeah, that's weird. And I, yeah. Make my own time, all of those things, you know. And I get, I get, I get, I get the, the opposite side. But now it's like, well... Now you have to do it. <laughs> so for those who are like working from home, you know, it's like business as usual. Maybe less stores are open. And you have to be more careful. Kind of, it kind of feels like that, and it's oh, yeah. kind of weird too. Yeah. But yeah, I cannot imagine people the like the the change, like the sudden change, but also like how stressful it is for for some people that have to do it and now are trying to scramble and and get an idea because like. It seems very simple and straightforward. Oh, you're working from home. You're making your own time. But there's there's some negative things about it too. Like you have to schedule your time as well. You have to make separation between that's my office and that's that's my family time. Yeah. Because like when those things blend together too much, not good. Yeah. No. Exactly. No. That's yeah. what's been even here. Uh, I was editing some uh, video that uh, for a product and and. I ended up uh, uh, going way too late, and I was like, "Oh man, I didn't get to draw my own stuff today." So maybe, yeah. uh, you know, like look, looking at the clock to make sure, like, "Oh, I'm gonna work till six or till seven, you know. But you know, even uh, that. What's really cool where I work uh, and who I work with is uh, I can. I mean, I'll show up. Uh, I don't necessarily have to be there right at like nine in the morning. Uh, they, they, it, it's, they're very lenient with everything to a point that as long as we get everything done, right? Yeah. The creativity, just like all the studios. I think back of uh, at Acclaim, when it was me, David, and Terry working there, um, we would stop work at 6 or whatever it ends, right? 
and we would just stay there till freaking midnight, man. We lived at a claim for like six years. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> but it's because we had all these stupid, well, not stupid, all these projects, you know, making these sci-fi films, uh, yeah. playing freaking Warhammer. Yeah, you know, it just, it just. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was such, it was such a good time, man. I'm glad it happened, but like, could I relive that? Uh, my selfish side of Terry, Christy, and David says yes, but I think we're past that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the right time to do it yeah, back I, then. Yeah, yeah. Not anymore. It's so yeah. crazy stuff, man. Uh, you know, like I said, Terry, uh, rooming with Terry at first, I was like, I don't know this guy. Uh, he's like very French, a very different personality, and then we ended up just, you know, hitting it off, and we did a lot of stuff together, and um, silly projects and all these uh, ideas that we had. We had a board of post-it notes of all these ideas that we wanted to do, like make a, a vampire western movie. Uh, we were going to start a, a candle company. It was just the most ridiculous <laughs> things in the world, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> a we were, candle company. Yeah, a candle company, you know. I can't... I, 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 get, I joke myself with that. I was like, what? <laughs> we had this bright idea. You know, we can make candles. But anyway, um, uh, we would do all this stuff and, and sometimes get in trouble for it. We would, uh, you know, like, did you ever play Space Hulk? Are you familiar with the Warhammer? Yeah, yeah. Space Hulk. Of course. Came with the aliens. We got into Space Hulk. I had the, the game and we would play that in overtime. And, uh, and, then, we, and then we were like these little characters that come with the game were too boring. So we went and bought like the actual ones that you could paint and everything. And we'd go uh, and primer those things in the ex in the fire escape, like in, you know, the stairway. We'd go all the way to the top and, uh, <laughs> and spray them up there thinking that, you know, uh, where it, nobody's going to smell it because it's at the highest point of the building. And then our art director comes in. Uh, all right, idiots. You guys got to stop, you know, you guys got to stop spraying, spray paint in the fire escape. And what, what was funny is like, he immediately went to Terry and I's office. He didn't, he didn't. He knew. He knew. <laughs> he knew. So, he knew right away. Yeah. That's funny. Actually, uh, I, I should, uh, I need to go through, you know, this last time that we were at Lightbox, we had a, a late dinner and. Everybody was revisiting old times, you know, of all the different stories. And I, I thought, I got to record this. So I, I put my phone on record and just left it on the table, man. I got to <laughs> shoot some of that stuff to you. There's some folks there that I didn't know. Uh, one guy showed up. You know Flight Trap? Is that his name on Flight Traps? Is that his? Anyway, I, I think that's his name. I can't remember. I don't know his real name. I just know his name from uh, from the forums back then. You know, kind of like Sparth, you know. What, anyway, right, right. Yeah. He showed up. I'm pretty sure it's Flytrap. Anyway, he showed up, and they introduced him to David and everybody on the table, and he and we're like, we don't know, like, Flytrap. Oh, yeah, you know. Right. <laughs> nobody knows nobody's real name. <laughs> nobody, so, like, yeah. You know? I had the same experience with David when I met him first time. With Bile? <laughs> yeah. And the soon I, the, as soon as I mentioned Siju, I was like, "What was your handle?" Yeah. And I said, "Tiger thirteen 13. I was like, "You were this guy." It's like, yeah. and you're vile. Oh. <laughs> we got to work on Tiger thirteen thirteen, man. We have some, yeah. We have some great ideas. Christy and I always said we got to call Mache and get that done. I think we could do really well with it. I really do think it, it could be a sketchbook. You think about it, a thousand three hundred and thirteen sketches from different artists. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. We had we just have to figure out a, a specific goal for it. I yeah. think that's what needs to happen because right so far it's been just like an idea. Sure. And it's one of those things like I, I you know we discussed like yeah. you know. Well, I, it's just I, an idea. I uh, I did meet. Um, I have a friend named Sandesh. He is a filmmaker in uh, in India, and he uh, he's very involved with that whole uh, uh, filming of tigers and the mm -hmm. conservation efforts there with the scientists and everything. So maybe we can touch bases with Sandesh and see if we can come up with something. Um, most of the um, documentaries that you see on tigers from around that area uh, are usually from him. He, he just, right. he, he just came out with a, 
uh, small cats of India documentary just like last this last month. It's a great filmmaker. Another guy that I met. I'll check it out. Yeah, it's it's a small it's a small world in that same community with animal with the documentary people as it is with artists. It's kind of cool. Yeah, Fun. that's what it feels like. You know, I, I it almost feels like I see rec. I, well, I mean, I, I'm not as familiar with that that whole environment. Who's who's who, but you can def definitely tell like when you're watching documentaries because I, li I like some of them. There is the one that came out came out on Netflix recently uh with the night vision it's all like shot in the dark oh, yeah. that was fascinating yeah, yeah that was it was so, so well with, made with those new cameras yeah 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 yeah. It was yeah that was that was the one like okay yeah and i i you know for me it's like because of the visual experience mm -hmm. i really appreciate like the, the the feel and how well it was done and the the beach shots with the with oh, the seals yes. oh my yeah. god yeah. like an alien world yeah it's that awesome, was man. so good. It's awesome, yeah. It was there's a, so good. There's a new documentary also called uh, Okavango River of Dreams. It's a three part. Check it out if you get a chance. You have to send me those links. I really need to. I, I really need to check yeah. them out. And I'll, I'll, I might I might put it in the in the in the no, show notes as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you. Uh, um, uh, and we actually cool actually uh, uh, we uh, donated to that conservation effort with Okavango. With right. Derek and Beverly. That's why you saw that little uh, clip on my Facebook where I was playing the flute. I don't know. Did you see that? The native no, flute. No, no. I don't go on Facebook too much. Uh, I, like I, I see your clips. I see your crazy shit on Instagram. I was uh, like, okay. what the hell? Yeah, I didn't. What put the hell is going on here? Yeah, I didn't put this. First, back. going going with my with my hawk, then then tracking panthers, then <laughs> painting a lion, then <laughs> hanging out with Easy. It's like what the. F yeah, I hey man, I love it. I love it. God, I love it. I mean, I could totally. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just great. I'm just grateful, man. I have so many ideas in my head as far as an art, art wise projects to help. You know, I have some, some crazy ideas. So uh, I'm gonna try to do something with this mountain lion stuff with Jeff Hogan, um, just because mountain lions are so close to me. Because uh, growing up in the area that I did, we had them. We, we, they're, yeah. they're there, right? And it reminds me of my family and that whole thing. But um, meeting all the different like-minded people from all over the world has been phenomenal. And also up and coming, uh, like really young camera operators and documentary folks. I got to yeah. meet a lot of, uh, it's really cool to see uh, a young, let's say 20 something year old uh, camera documentary person that's super passionate, you know, it's really cool to, to meet somebody and all, they're already established and named for themselves at such a young age and, yeah. and see where they go. But they, it's an art. You just see the passion, you know, coming out of, of what they do. Well, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it, it is an art and it's a lot of patience, man. Whew, it's a lot of yeah. patience. With <laughs> I can animals, imagine. It's a lot of patience. Also, it's not like you step out, oh, there's a, El Tigre, yeah. and, you, and you take a photo. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, there's a mountain lion. Let's take a photo. In one of, in one of Sandesh's uh, uh, documentaries, he's inside a blind, and he actually did put a time-lapse camera of himself, and it's like four days of just like falling asleep, waking up, <laughs> falling asleep. Oh, there's something else. There's a water buffalo oh, falling asleep, you know, until, until you get that three minutes of what you know what you were wanting you know yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy um i love it man i love getting outdoors uh it's super inspiring uh it makes me get back um uh, inspired by the stuff that i see right colors and and the landscapes you know i just recently before well i i got back from when was it that i went maybe like three months ago to uh europe i was in germany in Austria and in Italy, um, and it, you know, it's, it was just amazing. Uh, just the foods, the 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 Europe, the, the the history. I love textures. Yeah. You know, I'm sure my friends that were with me were like looking at me strange when I'm photographing lichen on the side of a castle or something. It's just so cool, man. You know how we think. You know, yeah, yeah. You don't. You never know what inspires you, right? So uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, we were just getting glimpses of this Corona thing, you know, and we're using antibacterial hand sanitizer like not, like crazy when we're out there. <laughs> but uh, we avoided that whole that whole thing, thankfully. Um, 
But uh, I'll give you some links of some great stuff. Okavango River of Dreams, I, I got an email from them this morning where they're giving uh, a code, and I should probably pass that on to you. I'll uh, yeah. double check to see if it's cool to do that, and uh, and I'll pass it on to you. I think I think I think you will love it. I think you'll love yeah, it. Yeah, definitely gonna check it out. Yeah, uh, some of the some of the like the the animal documentaries I used to watch, you know, Discovery and, and National yeah. Geographic mostly because they're the, the production quality and obviously the the BBC's Planet Earth, oh, yeah, 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 one of the best ever made. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's yeah. fascinating. It's yeah. such a it's such a it's such a library of ideas too. Oh, it's crazy. For all the things we do, you know, patterns and, and shapes and forms and. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, everything. Absolutely, man. The colors, the way, uh, yeah, the temperatures of things. Yeah, it's it's awesome, man. It's it's a it's a whole different world, but absolutely, those are the things that I look for to inspire me, right? Yeah. All those kinds of things, and I even started sculpting uh, uh, recently. I did my first bronze. Uh, this year, I'm gonna. I need nice. to start doing more of that. It's 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 so much fun, man. And of course, it's all wildlife. And again, it's like um, uh, to help conservation efforts. You know, I actually, you know, if I do send you that link of Eternal Enemies, or I, in one of those uh, documentaries, there's a silver-eyed lioness. There's a lioness that's got. She's got a silver eye, and uh, that's who I sculpted. And um, hoping to, hoping to sell some of these. Uh, limited edition things to raise money for some more efforts out there, you know, yeah. conservation efforts. So it should be, I thought about, I have a snow leopard idea. Like this whole big cat thing has been uh, something that we've been trying to put our, our um, finger on, on how to do it. You know, I have a, yeah. a, a great friend named David Arkenstone, who's a music composer and I'm working with him on doing um, an actual album of soundtrack that, uh, you know, help our you know efforts so yeah yeah, yeah. Should, be, should be cool but I, that sounds fun yeah yeah i'll also give you uh, uh i'm gonna give you a code for uh your listeners to uh use that cool at our clothing company hey maybe i will use it i will use it too yeah i will give you like we'll give you yeah. some percentage <laughs> off no absolutely and uh i'll send i don't do much outdoors but i remember that that, that few few times that i went out to you know i went to big bear and and uh and other play i used to i used to do that much more when i before i had a kid and you oh, know, all yeah. that's all that jazz yeah. um but i remember like i knew it's gonna be kind of chilly but i wasn't prepared for like how cold it's going to be but i had like you know i had that patagonia pants like you know with the soft <laughs> shell and all that stuff and i was so glad that i've invested in like okay. i know it's an overkill to get that but like with sitting there with camera equipment and and trying to catch like a nice shot and and being because that's as you said you have like even even with nature you have to be patient oh yeah yeah because yeah. like maybe the light is not perfect you know and all of those things and, and when i went to lone pine it was the same thing the morning was cold as hell it was like 30 something uh, and the day was like 80 yeah you know? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and that, that's it was really, awesome though that's what's super cool about working at cool is that i get to test a lot of the stuff like nice. early, early uh, samples of things to go out into the desert uh, for like quick wit wicking material or stuff that see how waterproof it is or see how good it's holding up against abrasions and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll recommend a couple of pants to you that I think you'll dig because um, we just came out with a new pair of pants called the resistor pants and uh, they're stretchable, but you can wear these in your office. They're great to work in. And then you can also go on a hike with them. Like you won't come out of them. I have, that's that, that's interesting. Know, I, work cool. a, I work at a I work at a at a clothing store, and, and these pants, and I have several of our pants, but I just will not come out of these things, man. <laughs> They're just freaking amazing. Well, every now and then you have to because it starts stinking. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. And that's the other thing; they don't stink as bad. And then, uh, uh, like, it's it's one of those things where you can take like two pairs and travel with them because. Yeah. You shower, you wash it, and then by the morning they're dry. It's amazing, yeah. man. You know? That's the thing. Like the way the way those clothes are designed mm -hmm. in general, they are so easy to 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 be around, like have around, you know? Even the jackets, like normal jacket you buy is like 
like carrying around a normal jacket is an ordeal, you know? Yeah. Meanwhile, it'll take like a soft shell, it just bulks to like this little cube. Exactly. You can throw in the exactly. backpack, it weighs nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, it costs a little bit more usually, but it's, it's like it. it's for worth like yeah, when you when you when you hike, when you go somewhere a little, a little further away than the than the than the regular two hundred meters off yeah. the track, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, not having any weight on you is so important. Yeah, um, especially when you hike for a long time. People uh, always uh, are fascinated by the way I pack for for any trip. <clears throat> I have a. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I have a normal size backpack that I travel with and that's right. all I take. I don't take a carry on or nothing because, uh, clothing now, uh, I sort of figured it out. Even when I was going to Africa, take, you know, these two pairs of pants, these two shirts, you know, it, it sort of know, and then you rotate washing them, you know, and, and yeah. quick dry. It's just incredible, man. And, and like yeah. I said, you know, it's, uh, they're durable. Yeah. Yeah. But we, that's what, that's another cool thing about, where I'm working is all the um, testing that we do on, on fabrics and all the uh, patents that we have on fabrics too. That's it's, it's, it's a whole new, a whole new world, man. It's awesome. Yeah. But I, it's, I, I, it's, I love it. I love it. For an average person, it seems like the most boring topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, it's just so, you know, you know, Coral, uh, the, the, Justin Kaufman, the painter Coral. I don't know if you know. Yeah, or not. yeah, of course. So for Massive Black, yeah, uh, yeah. I saw. I, I hadn't seen him in a long time, and we saw each other at Lightbox, and he's just he's in Washington, yeah. right? Like far, far north yeah. in the barn. <laughs> His artwork is just mind blowing, right? Yeah. God, so beautiful. Uh, he, I said, I work at an outdoor clothing company, and he's like. Yeah, I'm not surprised, man. It's like, oh, <laughs> <so> you. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you know? I used to, you know, I, I gear test everything, but uh, yeah. I don't know. It just it just fits. And, and I say outdoor clothing, but it's, you know, the funny thing is, is uh, it's outdoor clothing, but not really because we make the stuff and people use it, right? So. Yeah. It's changed over time, too. Like, the way it, the way it's designed. Like I was joking, like the the yoga moms in the Patagonia, but, <laughs> no, but, but that's what right. they were. You know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like a, it's like a soft shell you would take for like a hike in the mountains, and now it's like oh, I'm just going to get my coffee in it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. yeah, yeah. It's it's uh you know, it, it, talking. I talked to David quite a bit, and he's like, man, I'm so happy for you. It's it's so, it totally fits you, and and then I get to, you know I, I'm. It feels like I've been creating way more art, you know, whether it's uh, stuff for the, you know, all the UFC stuff that I've been doing. And then, the, yeah, what's what's that about? Well, man, um, again, that's another world that I'm in. Right. You, yeah, that's what that's what I said. You're the most interesting person I know. <laughs> so, uh, well, my background is in, in Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Uh, right. Training with Helson Gracie. And that opened the door to meeting a lot of people. Um, and fighters, right? So um, I've met so many people, uh, and and I do I do those pieces of artwork because I'm a I'm a fan as well. Not only am I uh, do I practice, but I'm a fan. And um, Rhonda was the first person to invite me. Rhonda Rousey was the first person to invite me over to her training camp to go do some drawings because I was sketching her. Uh, I always thought it was really cool when uh, Edmund her trainer would wrap her gloves up, you know, I was, right. and I want to do a painting of that because it's just so her intensity and her thought process and him too. And that's sort of a, a kind of a work of art too, wrapping hands. So uh, that was, it, it all started with a, with a sketch of that. And then her, um, I used to love watching her stretch because of her lines, you know, in her body, uh, yeah. her form when she's stretching. So I did a couple of illustrations and then uh, I really don't remember how, the invitation was was sent maybe through Instagram or Facebook where she wrote me and she's like, hey, uh, you're more than welcome to come to the training camp and, and, and sketch. So I took a sketchbook with me and uh, took photographs and sketched at the same time. It was really cool to watch her train. And Dana White came in one day for media day along with uh, Mike Tyson and uh, one of the Fertitta, Lorenzo Fertitta. I got to meet them in there. Uh, going back to when uh, I met Dana in person there, but I actually told Dana that he had sent me. I did a a, 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 a speed painting of Chuck Liddell back at a claim. 
Uh, <laughs> and I remember getting it. I used to be on this uh, on this crazy forum uh, for MMA back then, the underground it was called. And he sent me a private message. He's like, hey, I'm Dana White. Um, you know, I'm the president of the UFC. I'd like to buy that piece of Chuck Liddell. And I was like, <laughs> it's uh it was on it was digital you know it was like i don't know how to what to do i was like it's it's a digital piece it's like doesn't it's not an actual and he's like uh, yeah i want to buy it you know like <laughs> i don't remember if i actually sent it to him or not i think i printed it and ended up sending it to him but um uh That's funny yeah so ronda was the first person to to that i did something like that with i ended up doing i always do sketches of the face offs when they're friends of mine I've met a lot of people, Cub Swanson, uh, the fighter uh, who I who I love because uh, he went to Austin one time and I took my son to watch him train. And my son was probably in kindergarten, like four or five years old. Uh, Dakota was like four or five years old. And he was watching this guy train, uh, Cub Swanson, and Cub actually approached him uh, my cub, my son is really, really quiet and, and, and sort of bashful, won't talk a lot. And Cub actually got down to his level and said, hey, uh, I'm Cub Swanson. You know, what's your name? Do you want a sticker? And, and, and chatted with him for what probably was 45 seconds, right? A minute. Yeah. When you're that little, you makes, it makes such an impression on you. Giant, yeah. And so from that day on, he thinks uh, Cub Swanson hung the moon. Uh, <laughs> So he went to kindergarten telling everybody, you know, my friend is Cub Swanson, and they don't know who Cub Swanson <laughs> is. Right? So, but, kindergarten. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, we watch UFC daily. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he's, you know, I remember he for uh, his birthday party uh, for like three three years in a row, three or four years in a row, uh, Cub Swanson fought during Dakota's birthday weekend it was like april 15th 16th you know what one in that in that general area yeah and i think he was in the second grade that he said hey dad i want a cub swanson shirt and uh, they don't have any so i actually did a digital painting of of cub with a big grizzly behind him and it went to this t-shirt places where they laser print it you know so uh he's got a couple of shirts <laughs> here and i stay in touch with cub uh uh, I've done some artwork of Cub, and uh, this uh, recently uh, Dana White in, uh, invited me to uh, one of the events, this International Fight Week that, that's held in July. This last one that happened, and I got to I, I saw Cub, and I hadn't seen him for a while, and he remembered, and he remembered Dakota, and remember Dakota was uh, <laughs> he was five, so he's like, so how's your son now? Is he like eight or nine? I said, no, he's 12 he's like oh <laughs> so he sent uh he sent uh, uh dakota a message via video you know to, nice. you know, to him and and nice. That's nice. Things. so uh i got to meet dana dana uh uh was interested in buying a lot of my sketches you know uh so he's got in his collection of art he's got a bunch of my work for, for most of the ufc sketches uh he's got in in a new office that he that he made so nice he's he's a great guy he's a really giving guy um people see that side of him from um you know that people see at the press conferences or whatever but uh he's a super cool guy man uh i'm, I'm lucky he, he made he made a sport he made, he a, made sport. a sport i've always told him that uh and uh he's been a super big inspiration for me uh, whether it be through, you know, forming of expedition art, whether it be through, he, he went after something that he was passionate about and, and, yeah. and achieved it. Right. And then when you achieve something, uh, it's the whole, you know, the, the same people that crown you are the same people that want to behead you kind of thing. Right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, through him, I've gotten to meet a lot of the fighters, um, and, and through, uh, through the Gracie Jiu Jitsu that I've done. Right. That's been, yeah. Israel, Israel Adesanya, the style bender. Um, yeah, I, I hung out. That's a fascinating fighter. Yeah. That fight was weird, though. <laughs> well, the last one was like, what the hell? I don't. What the hell am I watching? Yeah, it was a, it was a little bit of letdown too, because like the fight, the previous one, was like probably the the most intense fight I've ever exactly. seen. Exactly against Gaslam. <laughs> Are you talking about the Gaslam? No, no, no. I'm talking about um, Whitaker. 
No, no, no. The fight. The, 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 oh, the, oh before you, Joanna. Joanna and uh, and Weiling. Yeah. Oh my God. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. bad. I I actually blame. Uh, I'm gonna blame Romero on that one because. Uh, oh yeah. He yeah. needs to take the fight to Israel. Why should Israel take? He was just standing there. Like yeah. not moving. Like the first minute of the of the fight, he was just. Yeah, yeah. Stand, no, stand still, so... like literally stand still. Yeah, yeah. But I... then you see him explode, and it's like, oh well. I mean, no one's saying gonna go on offensive against that guy. Yeah, exactly. And 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 because you're gonna get knocked out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. So, so I mean, I think Easy did the right thing. I was watching this fight with Ash, and we were just like, look at those leg kicks. Look at those leg kicks. His leg was, oh my god. Oh yeah, I know. I it, it looked like it looked like wasps and bees got to him. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like someone just put the spaghetti spaghetti ball under the skin. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> if he sent me a message this morning, I did a drawing of him yesterday, yesterday night. I think I did a drawing on my Instagram. And uh, uh, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, he, he's a good guy. He wants to help me with expedition art. You know, uh, Africa, African lions. He's like, let's, you know, hopefully I can do something to help you. Rhonda's the same way. You know, Rhonda has a piece in, um, in, uh, in our book, uh, in danger. She's nice. She's an artist as well. I got her. To, That's cool. I, I got to, I got to do, get her to do some uh, line stuff for us to see what she does. But, uh, yeah, it's great. And hopefully maybe one day I'll talk to Dana about seeing how we can do more efforts as far as, you know, conservation stuff dana dana's all about it he's he's a good guy yeah yeah what a weird uh you know when i was out there uh it was just very surreal uh i got to meet valentina i got to meet you know uh i had i already had met brian ortega because uh he went to our jujitsu place a couple of times in austin um but you name it i mean cerrone and i talked a long time uh cowboy cowboy's great Cowboy's a good guy. Yeah, he seems like a really fun guy to to hang around with. One as well. of the times in uh, you know I had chatted with him at the um, at that event, uh, you know behind you know in the back I, I had act so Dana gave me access to so many things. It was just very giving guy. It was it was insane. Like I don't I don't deserve what I got. I don't think. But uh, anyway, well, I mean, technically you kind of worked your way up there in a way. Yeah, it's you know, just, whatever you did, whatever you did, you did. People uh, are giving. Yeah, it's, you meet the right people at the right time. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's you know, nothing surprises me anymore. I'm I'm just lucky, I guess. I, I uh, I'm a, I think I'm a friendly guy. I'm pretty humble, and I'm I try to be real and and you know, if you're passionate about something, it's gonna it's gonna yeah. come out. And obviously, I'm a big UFC fan. I've always loved jiu-jitsu. I'm Helson Gracie's been my instructor and I've been, you know, it's just been, it's been great, man. And martial arts and nature in the outdoor world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Covered a lot. And the entertainment industry. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, man, you, you know, it's kind of insane. It's kind of insane how many grounds you, you've covered. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been, fun. but it's good. You 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 always like. Ever since I met you, you were always like this jo very jolly, fun person to be <laughs> around. Because you like you find you find happiness in in so many things that, and you're like no, nothing is, nothing is, nothing is driving you 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 mad. It seems like you you just brush away things that are like, oh, this is <laughs> I don't want to deal with that shit. You know, this is <laughs> I have I have more important things that are fun Man, to do. So. It's all, it's all, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't regret anything. It's, it's all been great. All experiences, you move forward and you learn. Yeah. The, I think the main thing that you have to stay focused on is being a student all the time. Of whatever. Yeah. You can't, you can't not let your ego get you, you know? No. We all yeah. have it. We all have an ego a little bit sometimes, but you have to control that beast because, uh, it could kill you, man. It falls apart real quick. Oh, big time, man. So yeah. uh, that's the only battle that we have to kind of contain, right? Uh, sometimes, just because you express yourself about something doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean you have an ego. Uh, if you're passionate and you know what you're doing and you have an opinion, I always say, say it out loud, right? So Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. And jiu-jitsu helps with ego 
quite a lot. Oh, no, man. <laughs> I know. Quite a lot. Oh. Once you get on the mat and get molly whopped for oh, like seven God. months straight, yeah, yeah. It'll, brother, it'll keep you in check. <laughs> my brother has uh, uh, recently gotten into it, uh, and now he, he's at that point where when I was going twice a twice a day, I'd go in the morning at six in the morning, and then again at six in the afternoon. Uh, that was insane. That was when I was just like totally into it. That's all I was doing. He's in, he's in that mode right now. He just started. He's, uh, he's been at it probably for, I want to say five, six months, maybe if that, if that. so uh, it's addicting. Yeah. I, I, he's at that, sp he's at that spot right now, but yeah. it, I'm glad he's doing it. Um, it saved my life a couple of times that, you know, where I've, you know, the, that famous Romanian concept art, fight with the gypsies that I had. I mean, if I didn't have the control that I did, it would have been a mess, right? So yeah. it does it does help to learn. That was the IFCC, right? That was uh, Behind the Black Curtain. Oh, Behind the Black Curtain, yeah. yeah. The very first uh, Eastern European concept right. thing that they did. Well, we had went. some run-in with the locals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man. They, yeah, oh my God, yeah. First day there, man. I got a black eye and and got torn up pretty good. But uh, oh man, it was quite an experience. It was a, it was nuts. I had that guy's tooth in my fist for. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> what a sur it was so surreal, man. So surreal. You know, I I just remember Cake Eye and you know Stefan. Um, uh, what's that? Oh my God! Come on, Martin Air. Yeah, Martin Air was there, and Alex Alvarez, and what a what a strange thing, man! And Wild. The whole the whole the whole workshop emptied out when when I called David. I, I called David on the phone because I thought you know, this is what entertainment industry does to you. I thought like one of these gypsies is gonna whistle, and like a whole bunch of guys are gonna come out, you know, crawl, jump over walls. It just <laughs> <laughs> just hand you my ass, you know. <laughs> but uh, I called David. I said, David, get out of here. I just got, uh, you know, attacked or whatever. And uh, I knocked that one guy out. The other guy's dragging his other buddy away. And and Christy was the first one out there. She turned the corner, and you're like, Are you all right, Elliot? And everybody. And then and then the crowd of people was actually the crowd of from the concept. <laughs> Running down the street behind the guy that put it together. That's crazy, man. That's, yeah. That <laughs> sounds so wild. Oh, man. I remember when you told that story on at THU. I was like, what the yeah, hell is going on? Insane, man. Yeah. It was insane. Well, things can happen. But yeah, jujitsu helps with that kind of situation where you can have some control. Because, like, s someone who's never done it, it's just like, you just, you just you know, fold them in the pretzel and they oh, are just yeah. like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's great, man. It's, you know, yeah. and it's opened up, you know, like other avenues too. Like I said, with the UFC stuff, you know, hopefully yeah. uh, Dana wants me to do a fight poster. Uh, That'll be fun. One of the, you'll be a right, you would be a right person to do it with like, oh, dude, I mean, mix I, it with animals. Fuck. Uh, yeah, man. I, I just can't, uh, it, it's just, it's such a hard thing too, because um, uh, they told me, well, yeah, it'd be, uh, just be prepared because, like, if they want you to do this guy versus that guy, you do the poster, and then that guy breaks his hand, so they got to change opponents. <laughs> you got to draw the other guy real quick. <laughs> you know that seems yeah. to be happening quite a bit uh, these days. So yeah, it does. Yeah, people pull out from fights, yeah. get injured. It happens all the time. Yeah, dude, Khabib and Tony has to happen. Oh I know, God, I, I know. I, <laughs> I know, man. I know. I thought that was a. I thought that was an April that Fool's thing. That fight is cursed, dude. I thought it was an April Fool's thing. Uh, that fight is cursed. It it's like cursed. fifth fifth time that's going to be yeah. postponed or canceled. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I understand. I mean, it's not I'm complaining. I, I understand why. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, yeah, it's I, the right thing to do, but... Yeah. I did get... Damn. I did do a poster for... Uh, I guess... I don't know if it's a poster. Uh, the guy that uh, films um, uh, fighter, Anatomy of a Fighter. Have you ever watched mm -hmm. those? No. Yeah, you should watch some of those. Those are really good. Yeah, he called. He, I did a drawing of Kobe and uh, Kamara Usman facing off, and he called and he's like, "Hey, can I use that?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, sure, man." So that was fun drawing Usman. Uh, that was a wild fight too. Holy crap! I, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, me it was too. so good. I love. I've it. heard Kobe is like he's just like. I mean, it's all act. 
Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think it's starting. But see, here it is. Here's the whole ego thing is starting to affect. Uh, is, I mean, I don't know if you saw Joanna get interviewed lately when she said uh, it's all an act, but it's starting to. He's starting to be an a hole, and he yeah. apologize, and it's starting to get out of hand, and they need to just kick him out of the gym. So that the act is affecting, you know, his arena. You know, yeah, that's crazy, man. I couldn't do that. I mean, he was almost cut, so I, I guess whatever he did worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. He, yeah, he's, was... on the, he's just on the on the mouth of everyone, you know. Everyone who knows about UFC knows about him. So yeah, and it's so it's so um, it's it's sad that it has to be that way, but yeah, it's so it's so amazing that uh, like during this whole coronavirus nonsense, uh, you know, we're like in dark moments and like you know the fights that took place in brazil were all uh with no audience and That's so weird yeah and and it's still uh you know it, people still watch it It was like highly watched and all the sports are done like i really thought this could be even ferguson thing was going to be like oh man this is going to be like crazy because nobody's watching it and dana has something up his sleeve i really hope they pull something off but i know that it's... i think they should just wait 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 for um for everyone you know for the whole situation to calm down and and just do it right yeah I everyone's waiting for it i think they'll fight in the summer i don't know if he's going to take the fight with gaichi or not it'll be interesting yeah you know I've, i don't think he should i honestly don't think he should they should just do it the f just i mean I, I know it's easy for me to say to wait because like they've done they've they've done the camp and like the amount of money and time and everything that goes into preparation like that and if you're not fighting you're not making money yeah that's another thing yeah so it's, but, it's easy for me to say i don't know enough but it's it's it, what i do know is one of those things it's like art on the surface it all looks like oh i could fight like no you you could not you could not you could not you would die yeah and you take the smallest girl in the division and she would kill you <laughs> she would kill you valentino's a i think i think even legally it's considered like if you're an mma fighter if you're fight, if you if you if you hurt someone, even in defense, like you have to be really careful because like you are literally a loaded gun. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, you're considered as a loaded gun because you can kill people. Yeah, you know. Oh, absolutely. So they, they yeah. did ask. Uh, they asked Valentina this morning in a, on a podcast if she thought that if if she was Tony, would she have fought? Like they're offering him Gaethje. He's like, would you fight or would you wait for for Khabib? She said, her personally, said she would fight because she's ready and prepared and right. it's just the way she is. She wants to stay uh, mobile and active. He goes, but who knows how Tony feels about it, you know? So Yeah, if that happens, then I don't think Khabib happens soon Soon after that because it's going to be a war. Yeah. Another good and... friend of mine is uh, uh, Chad Mendez. Yeah. Yeah, he's a really good friend of mine. He's super, super, super awesome guy. He's into hunting too, right? Yeah, he just sent me. Uh, he just sent me a, a Hoyt bow. So, nice. Yeah, yeah. He's into hunting. I, he has. Uh, that's what he does for a living. He's a guide, hunting guide service that he does. And uh, I've never been out with him because it's, it's always conflict of uh, scheduling when. Uh, yeah, of when course. He's out in this area, but uh, I'd like to get out with him one of these days. I see him at conventions and stuff when he comes here to Utah. And uh, he's got a business partner here, I think. But uh, Chad's a great guy. I've done a couple of fight shirts for him, and uh, and also like service, like pronghorn antelope and elk and stuff for his for his his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah it's uh, yeah. I not till I uh, start talking to somebody, Matche, do I realize all my spoons are dipped in so many different words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you realize. Oh my God, my life is actually pretty crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, it's all. I, I'm. I'm. I'm very grateful for all the people that I've met and all the people that are that I consider friends. You know. Yeah. Um, it's it's friendships are uh, are are priceless and and to me they're you know they're it's it's awesome. Keep yeah, it's one of those things, right? Like you worked on so many things already in terms of entertainment industry and, you know, you, you dipped your toes in all the other industries as well. Yeah. You quickly realized that, you know, the project that I'm on, not necessarily the most important thing, but the people I'm with. Yeah. That's that's where it all anchors, you know? Absolutely. I, I, I mean, 
it, it, it shows in the whole, uh, uh, like, myself, uh, Christy, and uh, David. Uh, Terry as well, but Terry's sort of been out sort of on the sidelines, but we've been through a lot together. And uh, it's tested our friendships, and um, you know uh, we're still friends and thankful, and doubts are gone. And because you know when somebody stabs you in the back, you don't realize like, man, who else is going to stab me in the back who I thought was my friend, kind of thing. So right, um, those friendships like with Christy and David and Terry, we've been through a lot together. Uh, a lot, so uh, it's kind of neat that we're uh, that we're still so close, you know. Uh, yeah. And then adding the Aaron Blazes and Nick and Jaw Cooper, Peter Hahn, uh, and I have hit it off. Uh, I don't know if you know Peter or not. I met him. I met him on the mixer. Okay. At Lightbox, yeah. He's a good guy. He's good friends with Aaron Aaron Lamonic too. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Peter's awesome, man. I took Peter uh, to a... Sounds like a really fun guy to, to hang with. He, uh, uh, I mean, we've, we, we've talked about uh, doing some projects together, and I took him with me to uh, Falcon. He wanted to watch eagles fly. Uh, he wanted to go to Mongolia and see eagles hunt. And I right. said, well, before you go out there, I said, let me take you, not in Mongolia, but to watch eagles hunt here. And he had a blast. We, I took him to a falconry meet in Texas. Mm-hmm. And, we hunted with birds of prey there for three or four days. It was a blast, but uh, he and I really hit it off. He's a good guy. Uh, it's 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 really awesome when passion brings uh, these close friendships, right? Like yeah, yeah. It's like Peter's a great guy, man. I, 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 that's what I, I absolutely love about this this industry is the the people like Terrell and Ian that are generous and 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 real and uh, you know, it's like I said, it's priceless. I love it. You know, um, all the all the people, all the connect. Besides them being connections, they're like real friendships. Uh, Bobby Chu and I uh, go back to when we did our first workshop together. I believe the massive black the one in it was in Dallas. I believe. Oh no, that was my second one. I, it was that was the first time I met Bobby though, and it's neat to see how. Uh, passion has taken him to where he's at now. It's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the light, the light box he organized last year, incredible. Yeah, yeah, I really hope it happens this year. I'm, I'm really hoping. You know, God, man, it's gonna make me gun shy with like these, like Comic Con. I was like, I don't think I'll go to Comic Con for a couple of years. So like, I don't think that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think about Comic Con, but I think all of those large, large gathering, gathering yeah, places is gonna be hurt for a while. Yeah, uh, they haven't said it. He he sent me an email yesterday. Bobby did. Uh, saying, yeah, we got that email yeah, too. Yeah. So I really hope it happens. Uh, I, there's not gonna be a lot of hugging and handshakes. That's for sure. Right? But, <laughs> it's uh, gonna be Purell everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sponsor to get right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, you know, you know, forget uh, all the art art sponsorships. You need Purell to sponsor your. Uh, yeah. You know, it's I. I'm going to be gun shy. Uh, I, I'm really hoping Lightbox happens. Uh, hopefully by then we'll have some solution. I, I think we will, uh, but I'm optimistic and I'm, I always have hope of those things. Same thing with my, uh, outing and I'm, I'm dying to go to Yellowstone. I didn't get to go to Yellowstone in the winter. Um, this year I just didn't have a chance. I'm not complaining, but every year I try to go in the dead of the winter where it's a different world. I don't know if you've been to Yellowstone or not, but no. Yellowstone in the winter is a, a foreign planet, man, and it's just different. It's just different. You get to see the wolves, and you get to see the, the bison pushing snow, and and it, it's it's so nice, and I just didn't get to go this year. and uh, So hopefully spring, you know, uh, we rented a cabin where we're going to have a whole bunch of people, Aaron Blaze and Peter, and all of us are hoping to uh, – that all this passes so we can go out there and photograph and my plan was to actually shoot a documentary uh, because the last couple of events now this wasn't this is something that I did anyway but I started invited inviting friends and it turned into this uh, sort of a camp and draw thing you know mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't meant to be an event it just happened organically 
Yeah. Yeah. So that that's another cool thing, right? Because there for a while we thought about opening it up to making it a huge event, but then then you're worried about the organization of it and, and that you don't have fun. Uh, yeah. The whole thing is to have fun and enjoy the outdoors, right? So we limit it to a small amount of people. So I'm not, I don't know after this virus thing if everybody's going to be able to make it or if they even open the park. Um, I'm hoping they do. And, you know, whoever goes, goes. Uh, if they open it, I'm there. Uh, yeah, it's who not, knows? You know, Hard to tell. Yeah, so we'll see. And then Africa uh, uh, is slated for September, the end of September or end of October. October, September, I, around that area because of the great migration that happened. So I wanted them to watch the great migration. Uh, I've seen it. I've got to see it already, and I thought it'd be great to, for them to watch it. Um, but again, who knows, right? The international travel. Uh, yeah, that might be. That might. Uh, skeptic. Might be. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Skeptical. Who knows? Maybe they come up with, with uh, better uh, yeah, antiviral I, treatment. I've heard like if they if they would get like a good treatment that prevents hosp hospitalization, then it turns into just being a flu. Yeah. And and then, you know, then it's much more manageable. And I don't think the restriction is going to hold for, for, for too long if that happens. But who don't, who knows? Maybe by the time, you know, I've, I'm, I'm going to post this in about a week okay. uh, from when we're recording. Uh, maybe maybe by that, by, that, by that time we're going to have news like that. So who knows? Yeah, you know? I hope so. so. I hope so. Um, dude. We've covered a lot of ground. <laughs> I, I, I would want to go for another two hours because there's so many topics well, I, we kind of glazed I, upon. I could talk and, to you, and it's good. It's good to good to hear you, man. Let's uh, yeah. hope see each other soon. But I need no. to get back to work. Pay them, but, pay them, pay them, pay them light bills. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good, man. Pay well, them LA know. LA bills. <laughs> let me know when uh, this when you post this, and and if uh, I'll send you a, a code. That you can put for your, uh, you know, we, I'll send you a code for your listeners, or for, yeah. for you, or whoever, uh, for uh, for a while with a code to uh, get like twenty percent off of some of our stuff. I think, I think, uh, uh, and I'll make some suggestions for some artists, and then you can probably post it or whatever. Cool. Can work. Yeah, that makes that 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 sounds good. I'll put it in the show notes for everyone to to grab Perfect. it uh, as well. So sounds we can good. do that. Check. Is there anything you want to plug? No, before not we, right now, man. Uh, no, just expeditionart.org and follow us on Expedition Art on Facebook. Um, see what else. Uh, I mean, our, our next, hopefully our next. What's your Instagram? Like, what's your handles? Uh, the handles, handles for people to follow you. Art is on IG. On Instagram is Expedition Art. And mine is, uh, I believe, is Art of Manu on Instagram. Oh, my God. Uh, you don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Manu Carrasco art. Manu Carrasco underscore art is my uh, cool. My handle. I'll, I'll make sure that's listed as well. Cool. And then uh, yeah, well, and our website is to follow. Our ex, our website is expeditionart.org. So. Cool. Sounds, sounds good. Sounds good. That was great to awesome. see you, man. Good seeing you. Yeah. Too. Nice catching up. Yeah. Nice catching up, man. We should do it again soon. Yeah. Let's talk about um, thirteen thirteen. I'll shoot some ideas for you, and then uh, let's make that sucker happen. Yeah, sounds good. Let's All right, actually, brother. Let's actually set up a call for that so we can actually have a discussion about it, you know? Perfect. Cool. Sounds awesome. Good. See you, man. Thanks, Manu. All right, bye-bye. Uh, thanks, everyone who joined the the, the podcast and uh, for listening. Uh, as usual, if you enjoyed it, uh, subscribe, hit a like, all those things, you know? And yeah, dude, stay, he stay, he stay healthy, stay safe. Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk some more after this. So, have a good cool. one. Cheers, guys. Bye. Peace. Cool.